Good Friday afternoon. This is the Brian Gould Show Sports Edition on 444 Radio. It's been a long week. Not for you. No kidding, right? What are you talking about? (laughs) He's back. Mm -hmm. I'm your host, Brian Gould, along with Evan, Jay, the mastermind behind all the mayhem that is 444 Radio. We had a closeout game last night for the Dodgers. Dodgers took on Washington. They come from behind and, and win game five last night. Murdoch got killed in that game. He did. He took, he took the seven under, and he took uh, L.A. to lose. And L.A. wins, and it was the over. Dodger. It was. It was at least seven. Right? You said yeah. under, too, with that pitching. Yeah. I thought it was, too, yeah. It should have been with that, but I said with LA. that pitching. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Ver, uh, not Verlander. Jeez, Detroit days. <laughs> Scherzer was on the mound last night, and that should have been it. But Kershaw came through. Dodgers win 4-3. to three. And uh, now they head to Chicago to take on the Cubbies. So we got our final four set tonight. We've got Toronto taking on Cleveland in game one of their best of seven. Eight o'clock, Estrada on the mound for Toronto, Clubber on the mound for Cleveland. Both pitchers are 1-0 and in the postseason. Cleveland obviously favored at home over under that game, 7.5. Toronto's hot right now, and I think you got the two hottest teams in the American League coming head-to-head, and uh, that might actually go all seven games. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Cleveland's playing great. Toronto's playing great. You know, pitching wins games, blah, 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 blah. But you have two very, very good young baseball teams that uh, are playing for the World Series, and they're <laughs> they're showing it, too. Uh, again, both pitchers 1-0. and Dodgers will take on the Cubs in Chicago. That, you know, my, my first pick was uh, Cleveland and Chicago in the World Series, and I'm still sticking with that. The, the Cubs... And the Dodgers, I, that's two powerhouses. And then you've got two, in my opinion, two young, hot American League teams. You're going to have a powerhouse versus one of the hottest teams in baseball in the World Series. In your Final Four here, or in the Final Four, you like the Dodgers winning that series? Or, or the Cubs are a no-brainer here? Um, Here's my issue. The Dodgers are exactly where... The Mets were last year. Mm-hmm. The Cubs were probably the best team in the country at that time until they met the the Mets. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, you you, you think uh, part two? We see history all over a, again. It's not 108 years for no reason, right? You know, unfortunately. Right. <laughs> um, my thing that the thing that sucks for me is, um, I actually like three of the four teams a lot. I like L.A. a lot. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see LA go. That'd be cool. You know, um, matter of fact, uh, I am a Mets fan only because of the Dodgers. Really, the Dodgers didn't move. If they didn't move to LA, the Dodgers would have stayed in Brooklyn. That's true. There would be no Mets. No Mets. So, and of course, they also have my skipper that I love from Tampa Bay. So, oh, okay, man. Okay. Yep. So those are two big things that I like about them, and they haven't been there in forever. Which I, you know, so I'm pulling for them. The Cubs are that. Just you know, baseball's you know whole everything about baseball is 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 the Cubs. You know, right? It's that never give up spirit. The you know they've earned it a thousand times over. Just haven't gotten there. They are, and you're you're pulling for all those guys. You, you really are, because you know I'd like to see them be able to get a, a World Series and let some people let some old people die in peace. You and know, put it to bed. You Finally, know? You know? yep. My only problem is the thing that worries about me is if they do that, do they turn out to be scumbags like uh, Boston? Do they turn into that absolute nightmarish mm. freaking wackadoos that think all of a sudden they won a couple games in 150 years and they're awesome? I would assume Madden would keep that under wraps. No, and, no, no, Cubs. Oh, the Cubs. Yeah, Madden would. Oh, keep, I'm, I'm Madden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Madden. Madden would keep uh, certain parameters on them. I think you know guidelines like, look, if you're going to be douchebags, yeah, you know, you're playing tight. I don't know how he'd handle that, but I, I think he's got a good handle on it that that might be. Well, I'm not talking about the players. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fans. Oh, the fans walking around with you know? chips on their shoulders. Because, I mean, I, I don't really have too much. I don't hate Boston as a team. 
I hate the fans, fans the which fans caused me to hate jerks. Boston as yes, a team. Exactly, I'm with you on that. You know Same thing with like Montreal. I'm a big you know hockey guy. Yeah. Montreal uh, fans, oh, they're and they're they're French Canadian on top of it. Right. Oh, oh, this double negative. They're yeah. jerks. We 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 yeah. are assholes. Like I can't stand. Montreal fans and Boston fans are like neck and neck. I, I can't know. say I don't like one more than the other. I don't like them both. Yankee fans are annoying. Yes. But that's because entitlement, because they've had so many. Yep. You know, so. But, they, but you can still have a good time with them. Yeah. You know, Boston is. They're bad. They're horrible. They're bad. And I, and I hope, I hope, I hope that, and I don't think it will happen, that Chicago, they get, they get one or two. Because chances are they win. They, they've got two or three years, four years. Easily, they can Easily. go ahead and make it. They've got a solid you know? squad there. I mean, the new Vegas odds came out. I'm looking at it right now, literally just a minute ago. It hit up on my screen here. Um, Chicago, obviously, is the the favorite to win the uh, the National League and the World Series at 29%. Right. Uh, they've got a 54% chance at beating the Dodgers. Toronto's the So, fav- wait a second. Am I wrong, am I wrong here? But... Was uh, uh, Back to the Future one year let wrong? One, one year, year off? off, man. Imagine that. And they almost went. They almost had it last yeah, year. That's right. <laughs> um, Toronto's the favorite in the American League at 58% and 28% to win the World Series. Dodgers are 45, uh, 45% chance uh, winners for National League, 22 for the World Series. And this shocks me. Cleveland bringing up the rear at 41% to win the American League and 19% to win the World Series. I've got Chicago and Cleveland. What am I missing? I'm missing uh, Cleveland, Chicago, L.A., L- and, and uh, Toronto. Toronto, yeah. the Canadians. So right now the favorites, according to Vegas, is Chicago and Toronto in the World Series with uh, Chicago 1% chance better than uh, Toronto to win the World Series. I think they're absolutely wrong. I think it goes through uh, the National League no matter who wins. Yeah, yeah. I do. Although last year I thought the same thing. I thought the same exact thing last year, and my Mets beat the Cubs, and then my Mets got just beat up in five games. Let me open up. I can't remember. Was it the American League that won the All-Star game this year? Yes, which I hate. 2016 MLB All-Star game. Just double-check that, because if that's the case, uh, yes, the American League did win 4-2, to two, so... Uh, Going with the Vegas odds, say uh, Toronto and Chicago get in, we start in Toronto the first two games. That could be huge. That could be a tough one for the Cubbies on the road if you know this plays out to the favorites. Once again, this goes to my I hate that that stupid yes stupid game. Yep. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it's a very important game because I think it's great for the for the fans and it's important to give the fans something. It back. gave it quote unquote meaning, but but it's so stupid that that one game that people play one game together they've never they've some of those guys never played before ever together right and that that's supposed to make that's supposed to be determine oh, you know, the outcome of the world of the world now series. to take a page out of the WNBA book here now if we went with their their format. Cubs have the best record. They get to the World Series. They open up. We open up at Chicago because we earned it. We have the best record. We are the that's best the team in baseball, be. and that's how it should and that's be. That's the way it was. It's crazy. That's the way it used to be. Yep. Oh, unfortunate for the American League team that uh, that gets the first two games at home and doesn't produce, whether it be Toronto or Cleveland, because you're you're being gift wrapped uh, home home field advantage. And not you to know? mention, you know what? I think it's not fair for the uh, for the All Star game. Because I think it's the All Star Game is set up better for the uh, American League, especially when they're doing it with American League, uh, American right. League rules. As the as the home team, yeah, because of the DH versus the Absolutely. pitcher hitting. Um, it wasn't didn't and pe- not to mention small ball is tougher to do when you don't know how everybody plays. If you aren't used to playing with people, mm-hmm. you know you're not picking up the same subtle uh, l- the same subtle. Things that you're used to doing with the same guy over and over and over, as opposed to just going out there and swimming, swinging a piece of lumber, right. and trying to heave it over the wall. I mean, I get the the whole DH position because you usually put a power hitter there. Yep. But in the you know, personally, I think if you're going to play ball, you're going to play on the field. So if you want to hit the ball, you got to play in the field somewhere. So the DH thing, what you know, again, it's usually a power hitter, or a good hitter. And the the pitcher gets to sit out. Heck, put the pitcher up there and let him swing the ball. That should just be universal, in my opinion. I, I agree with you, and I understand what they're saying. They're like, look, pitchers, we are paying them a ridiculous amount of money. I don't want to put that person. And he throws with his hands. Yeah. I don't want to put that guy in front of another guy throwing 100 miles an hour at that guy. Let alone swing and pull a muscle you know, or something stupid like that. That I understand. Yeah. 
But you're playing baseball. You're a baseball player. Right. Part of being a baseball player is swinging the goddamn bat. And you did that all the way through up until college. You're, you know, I don't know if the uh, do they have the DH position in high school? I ble- uh, in high school, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm th- I know they do. They, in, some might, some might not. You know, I don't remember. I don't know if they do in college either. I think does the batter hit or a pitcher hit? In college? I think they do have a designated hitter in, in some college. See, at some point that gets cut off, and then there's a mindset. Okay, I'm a pitcher. I don't ever have to swing a bat again. Oops, I just got drafted by the Nationals or the Cubs. You know now what, I got to learn how the, to swing. You know what the weirdest part is, okay? You're talking about a position that is so important. All you want to do is get to the World Series, right? Yeah, that's it. But you're like, eh, I don't have to worry about batting ever. But then you get to the World Series, and at least half of the games, maybe three, maybe four, mm-hmm. of the games in the World Series, the, mo- the whole reason why you're playing, what you're doing what you do, you are a dead duck out there you've never done anything <laughs> you're screwed you're that's that's you're it an absolute dead duck you almost look at that that position on the batting lineup and you're like yeah that's a that's maybe at best a one for four night right there if you're lucky that is an automatic out and it could actually cause you to have to pull a hot pitcher yeah because you don't go about you don't do your you don't do your job you do not hone your craft right because you're a lazy prick you're like there's no reason for me to go ahead and you know, practice uh, you know ten hours a week, or fifteen hours a week, or twenty no, hours a week. No, no, no. You know, hitting. I'm only going to do it a few times this year. That yeah. is absolute crap. Yeah, it's unfortunate because the uh, the National League is at the disadvantage when when uh, when they're at home. Oh, well, I don't know. Would they be a disadvantage because their their pitchers are used to hitting? You know, American, National League. Yeah, American. Oh no, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 from when they're hitting it, the, they're definitely advanced. Now with the American League, like they they did away with the whole inner league thing. Now, now it's just like you play baseball. American League team plays a National League team, and I, I don't think they even call it inner league play anymore. Remember, they used to block off right. X amount of weeks, and they'd really put that you know out there. Now, like if Detroit goes to sh- the Cubs, and they're home pit, game rules, you know, home game rules. Yeah, it's not really. Um, Do you like the inner league play? Yeah, yeah. See, I'm fine with it either way. Um, I am a National League guy, and I live in t- I live in Sarasota, and the closest baseball stadium is an American League team. Right. Which I wasn't expecting this. I'm a big believer because I'm a baseball fan first, and then I'm a Mets fan. Okay? Okay. Um, I'm a big believer in you have to go and back your home team, no matter who it is, because if you don't, you will eventually lose that team, and then you will never even get to see the team you do like. Depending on the market, right? yeah, yeah. So, um, and I never really expected to be an American League fan. When I lived in Boston, I went and saw a bunch of Boston games, but I was a kid. All right. But I've never really expected to be an American League team. It's, it's, it's actually been very surprising and, and very nice to be a fan of the Rays, which right. I am. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I mean, I'm a Mets fan first, but right next to that, I am a uh, a Rays fan. The only time I would ever root against the Rays is if they were playing my Mets. Yeah, that is it, right? Right. Never root against the Mets, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but but I mean, and that's because I'm a baseball fan. But it, it, I never expected to be an American League fan because I just I just don't I don't like the way it's played. Right. I, I grew up, uh, you know, Northern Michigan. We had the Tigers, so I grew up American League all the way. And I didn't get a chance to really watch National League baseball at all because the Tigers only went to one World Series while I was growing up as a kid, the Roar of 84. And so to see a National League team play was a treat. And TBS, you know, God bless his soul, Ted Turner, yep. he put um, the Braves, you know, at 805, 705, 605. You know, I loved that. When it comes and, to sports, and they should have to teach people who own teams, the NFL uh, some of these baseball teams that black out their their uh, games to people because they don't sell out. Mm-hmm. Ted Turner couldn't get anybody into the stadium at all. You they, literally it, back in the day when my wife when my wife was a kid would go and they'd have extra tickets and they put it on you know the windshield on Just the windshield giving whatever, them away, give them away. And when they came back, there'd be more tickets than when they left. What? I mean, that's how many people wouldn't go. Wow. But Ted Turner's like, I bought this radio, I, I bought this TV station, right? And I don't have enough content on it. I know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to go ahead and take over the entire Southeast. He did because the Southeast doesn't have at that time did not have no. Where the hell was the, the closest team to the Southeast? I, I guess it, it would have been Atlanta. That's it. it Houston. That, that was it. Houston other, out other, west. Other than Houston, well, uh, and then oh, what? Um, Oh, uh, the Cardinals? St. Louis. St. Yep. Louis, right? Yep. That's the closest, right? Right. At that point, you've got to go to New York. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to go ahead and take over. And that's exactly, that's why. He did an excellent job. I mean, oh, I, like absolutely. I said, I grew up a Tigers fan, you know, from the age of four till I left Michigan when I was 21. You know, it was Detroit, Detroit. And then all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden I'm seeing Atlanta and like, Baseball's baseball, but just to see the the fans and yep. then watch what they do. Two with biggest the, markets, two biggest groups of fans, hands down. Yankees and Atlanta, Atlanta. yeah. And to get, um, you know, the TBS and TNT nationally syndicated. So uh, to get Atlanta games in little Alpena, Michigan, and Northern Michigan. I mean, I was in the sticks, and I'm watching Braves baseball, and I was like, wow. National League Baseball, like all it was was the Tigers. Whoever whoever came to Detroit or wherever Detroit went, it was always an American League team. And uh, then finally you get Atlanta Baseball, and I'm like, wow, this is a treat. This is awesome. I, and I loved, and I started becoming a little bit of a Braves fan. Much, I, I much more them. fun baseball. And I could name just much as many Braves baseball. players as I could Tigers players. And uh, then, you know, Atlanta went on that great run where, you know, how many seasons in a row, that, you know, going to the World Series, Tommy Glavin, you know, the list goes on. One and, in 95. And, uh, yeah, and I started following them and pulling for them a little bit. And then all of a sudden, uh, in little Alpena, Michigan, you had a group of Atlanta Braves fans. Oh, like yeah. when, when the season was done for the Tigers, because we didn't make the postseason, we Just took our Tigers hat off Atlanta. and put our Atlanta hats on. Like, we, <laughs> it and was crazy. The best part is it's a, it's, it's a different league. So you can you don't have to worry about, I hate these guys. These guys beat me every year. That's what's nice about the Rays for me. Makes absolutely no difference other than if we get to the World Series. Yeah. Makes no difference at all. Every four years, because it's every what a four year rotation or three year rotation, they come into town and Give those take, will be the yeah. days that I'll be like, well, today I'm a Mets fan. Yep. But other than that, so you can without any guilt because that's what it is. It's always like guilty when you're when you're pulling for somebody else mm-hmm. because it's the American League as opposed to National League, and with you the other way around, right. it's a uh, National League as opposed to American League. You can literally invest. Invest your entire self into that that team and not have to worry about it. Right. Not have to worry about it at all until you hit the World Series, and then of course you go to your first love. Right. Exactly. You know, now, but at that time you're like, if it ends up Mets and uh, the Rays in the World Series, I can't tell you how tickled I'd be. Oh yeah. Okay? That'd be I would great definitely, to watch. I would definitely pull for the Mets. You can't lose. But cannot lose. No. You see, <laughs> that's right. I I might not win the way I want, but I can't lose. Either way, I'm going to be just as excited when it's all said and done. Obviously, I'd rather to have my Mets pull it out. Right. But if it comes out that my Rays took it, are you kidding me? And that's how I am with uh, a Tigers fan first and Dodgers fan second. And uh, see those guys play. Finally get to see those guys play from time to time. Yep. And then have the Dodgers come here to Tampa is pretty cool. You know, the whole interleague thing. I I don't mind the fact that they, they, uh, they intertwine, you know, National League, American League teams playing each other. I would kind of go back to that, you know, for a three to five week f- block teams, you know, interleague. Right. Then go a month or two and then another three to five week block. I'd block it off because uh, for the sake of making it more valuable, more um, special, I think is right. the word I'm looking for. You know, just to see the Tigers play the Cubs this week and then in a couple weeks we might play S- St. Louis. Right. And then put it in a block and say, okay, they're playing these three or four teams exclusively during this time. You know what, though? And then do it again later on in the season. Maybe do it three times a season. I understand that, but you know what, though? That, that's kind of rough for the guy who goes, look, I can only go to three games. And my chance of being going to three games, you know, in a, in a week and a half period is tough. Yeah. So if you spread it out a little bit more, you go, okay, bang, I can go to this one, I can go to this one, I can go to this I one. I get that, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm fine with it either way. I'm fine with it. I like that they do it. I, I like it either way. I like it that it's interleague play that's absolutely fine. Um, because I do get to see my Mets now, right? Um, but especially like my SEC football, my football, I like, I like not being able to see teams until it really, really, counts. really matters. Yeah, you know, yep. and I got to, and you know me, I always say every game matters and every strike matters, and it does. But some games are just more but, special. Yeah, yep. I mean, yep. you get to see the Yankees and Mets, you know, once every eight years, once every decade. That's more exciting. Of course, you don't get to see it all the time, but that's, but that when it does happen. Yeah, you know when the Subway Series happened for me, that was a big deal. That, for the rest of the country, that was huge for just baseball no in general. One of the one of the worst watched uh, um, World Series of all time. The Subway Series uh-huh. was how so? No one. Cared. I was tuned in. If it, if it wasn't for hardcore baseball fans and New York fans, and I'm not, and I and I watched it. Wow, yep. I didn't know that. Yep. I figured the 
the Colorado and whoever the hell they played in the World Series was the worst watch. Wasn't that like Colorado and yeah. Houston? Well, or I don't, know I don't if it was even the remember. Worst. I know it was one of the worst. One of, one of them. The no kidding. Didn't know yeah. that. Hmm. I mean, well, because realistically, you have you have a lot of people who hate the Yankees. Yeah. So they're not going to watch anyway. And then they're like, ah, you know, the Mets. Geez, that's another New York team. Now it's all in New York. And you know how people get like, ah, oh, you know, the hell with New York. Right. 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 Now I understand because, you know, I can understand if it was, you know. Uh, let's say it was Boston, and of course can't be the Yankees. But let, maybe it's like Boston and the Indians. I'm like, okay, I I, I really don't care. Well, well, no, it can't be the Indians either. No, right? no, no. Um, it'll be like Boston and White Sox. Okay, no, no, that's that's, that's American League too. American League. Because I can't say Cubs, like because I, you know, and that's trouble. I like I like the National League teams. Boston and say Arizona. Arizona, the there Diamond, you go. Diamondbacks. Right, perfect. Who? Things, <laughs> I do not care. I do not I wouldn't care. Watch, yeah. For Boston whatsoever, I would, I would, except for the fact that I'm a, I'm a fan of baseball, so I'm going to watch the World Series anyway. But I'm definitely pulling. It. I, I'm watching that series because it is what it is. But I'm pulling for Arizona at that point, no yeah. matter what. Yeah, I do not care. I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm just. It, I mean, I've got friends that uh that are Boston fans, and yes, so do I. And it's and we hard, all have our man. problems. We, we all have our crosses. Yeah, there. It, it's hard because it's just like you can't you can't come to them and say, okay, well, the Sox lost. Four to three, you know, and I even come in casual and just like, man, it was a good game, even though they lost four oh, three. That and sucked. It was bad, that, blah, 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 horrible calls. Blah God blah blah. Dang. I can't believe they actually let us strike out. What's the, going on? They were missing the corners. I'm like, really? The sun was shining on um, the third baseline, and there was da, 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 wind. Da, da. And I'm like, dude, I just complimented you, even with a loss. Chill out, you know, and. Forget it. Yeah, it, <laughs> just, it, it's just I don't tough. even bring up sports to my my Boston friends anymore. I just leave leave it go. Yeah. So when when it comes to the uh, you know the interleague stuff, I can take it. I, I'm fine with it either way, and I like it either way, and I understand why people like it either way. Uh, I'm a little bit more of a purist when it comes to baseball. That's why I'm a National League fan. So um, I would rather. I think I would rather it still be. You know, you only play your teams that you're supposed to play until you get to the World Series. Because <laughs> I love that. I okay. do. I, I got to say, but I liked. I love the fact. That being said, I love the fact that I can see my Mets. I, lo- I, I, well, you know, being a Tigers fan, I like the fact that we can not only play against Kansas City, but then we can also play our National League rival, St. Louis, because right. c- we either beat the snot out of them or they beat the snot out of us. And then to be able to play the Chicago White Sox and then go across the street and play the Cubs too, yeah, is pretty cool. But uh, once again, talking about baseball here, if the Cubs. Fifty four percent, or yeah, fifty four percent winner. Vegas odds for the uh, National League, and Toronto is the fifty eight percent winner uh, to win the American League. With the Cubs slightly favored in the World Series, be fun to see how that plays out here over the next week or two. I would definitely put my money on the National League. I, I'm with you there. It's either the Cubs, and if the Dodgers pull that off by some weird chance, I, I you know it's the National League's year. And by the way, I am an Indians fan. What? You need fan all day long. The hell with friggin' uh, Toronto. Oh, you just want to see Toronto. I can't stand the, it. The Cleveland. hell with Toronto. I'm pulling for Toronto on that one. No, it's just because no. Cleveland's out of Ohio and it's a Michigan. No, Ohio I, I, thing. I understand what yeah. you're saying there. I mean, you know. Uh, all of a sudden, there's Cleveland Indian fans that are tweeting at me and stuff. And I'm like, where were you guys earlier in the season? Shut up. Go away. Mm-mm. Now it matters. You know, bandwagon. Jumpers. Why did you go? F- why did you go for two? Because they wouldn't let me go for three. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I understand the hate. I do. Now, speaking of uh, getting to see teams that you don't normally get to see, jumping over to uh, NHL news. Last night, how about that, baby doll? Woo, what a game! I was going to call it baby doll. Holy Jesus! Oh, yeah. What? A, what a I, game. I looked up down three nothing. I'm like, oh man. And okay. there's and there's a Red Wings guy standing there. He's like, look at that score. Yeah. I'm like, and of course I was busy doing other things because watching the football game. I was watching a movie at the same time, actually talking with friends. And I walk back out, and I'm like, four to three, huh? <laughs> it was uh, it was great because I was going between that Wings game and the uh, Thursday night game on my laptop. Yep. I was flipping back and forth, and um, you know, we opened up right away two nothing, and we've got the Tampa Bay killer, Thomas uh, Vanek. We scooped him up from Buffalo. Now in 42 games against Tampa Bay, Thomas Vanek had scored 26 goals career 
and we scooped him up for Tampa Bay reason because of the, right. the shit and issues. Hey, if they're killing that, us, that, get him so he can't kill yeah, us anymore. We're, we're tired of losing to you guys in the first or That's second right. round. In the, we're tired of losing to you, period. So Vanek comes out, scores the first goal, and then five minutes later he scores the second goal, and it's 2 nothing Detroit. And, I, and I'm texting my buddies. I'm like, dude. Oh, that's right. You're a Redwood fan. Yeah. Right. I'm like, you know, Vanek's going to kill you guys. And uh, then it's 3 nothing. Then it's 3-1. Then, you know, uh, Tampa com- comes back, ties it up 3-3. And then they go on a tear in the uh, fourth. Uh, they scored four goals in the third period. And I'm like, dude, where's the it defense? It ended up 7-3? 6-4 was the oh, final right. score. Uh, you got, a, got an empty netter. But, um, you know, that rivalry there. See, that how that used to be was... Um, when Detroit and Tampa would play before the re- realignment a couple seasons ago, if uh, we played down here in Tampa, this we played one game, right. one game a season. The next season it'd be in Detroit. Right. Then the next season back in Tampa, and then they then they started doing a one and one, one here, one there. Then the realignment. Last season we played four go- uh, games against each other, and then this season we've got five. Three here in Tampa, two in Detroit. So that rivalry is just it's just growing yes. and growing. And by the way, there is nothing better than a good rivalry in sports. It's great. I don't care. It took a while for some some fisticuffs to come about. Uh-uh. It, it got. I think it was three to two, and um, uh, I think uh, Killorn dumped a. Uh, Dumped one of our players on top of our goal goaltender, and then all of a sudden it was three on three fighting, just going at it. And I was like, "There we go. That's what we need to see." I was see. like, "Oh man, we only need eighty five. What's eighty six in a regular season, right? Eighty six. Eighty two. Oh, eighty two. Eighty two. I'm like, we only need eighty one more, and we're perfect." <laughs> Well, when we were up three to one, I'm like, uh, well, I was thinking the same thing, uh, you know. And then it, you know, it c- came back. How it, do you know you're a sports fan? Because when that po- game one, really, you're yeah. going to go perfect. Well, I don't know it's, it's possible. Of course, it's not going to happen, but it's possible. Of course. So Tampa comes from behind. They score four in the third for the win, and uh, Lightning Killer Thomas Vanek got a uh, first got a star last night, which I was glad to see. But um, what's a star? Uh, at the end of the game, they do the three stars, the three best players on the ice. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, uh, do they keep track of that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Mrazek for Detroit was on his head, making saves. I, that score could have been ten to four. Like right. there was five or six goals that Mrazek stopped. Now Bishop, man, he he looked horrible in the beginning. Uh, the first period, Detroit yeah, he dominated. Like he was tight. And then he, he loosened up and, and, and really started buckling down. What helped him was uh, the defense for Tampa. Tampa started yep. playing defense. Like, the, I don't know if there was just this mindset like, hey, we got to hurry up and score and score first and score a lot. Because the whole right. first period, you saw Tampa down in Detroit's end of the ice, but Detroit was on the other end of the ice with the puck scoring. Right. And then second period, Cooper changed something up with Tampa. They started playing more defensive, aggressive, if that makes sense. Uh, with hits, poke checking the puck away, Hedman started showing up and uh, doing those things that you don't see on the stat sheet. Knocking, he knocked um, uh, Larkin's stick right out of his hand, uh, slashing it down, which you can do. But if you break the stick, you know it's a penalty for interference. But uh, Hedman showed up, started playing great hockey. Tyler Johnson came out of nowhere, scored a goal. Uh, Kucherov, he was firing the puck like crazy. He couldn't put one in the net. You know, he just got his big contract. He was making seven hundred thousand last year, and they finally inked a deal two days before the first game of the season. He, they flew him in from Russia, and Stevie slaps with a con- love slaps a contract down and is like, "Dude, sign this, please sign this." And they they inked him up. So that was a big big deal because uh, that kid there, man, you can't let that guy go. Yeah, and uh, he he had a great game, um, really great game. Unfortunately, Detroit lost, but it was a great game to watch. It was. You know, all God, imagine being at that game with all those with all those freaking goals. Oh yeah, ten goals oh, in my the first God, game of the season. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Now, as I said, this is now my third, fourth year. I think this is now my beginning of my fourth year where I've been actively trying to get into NHL hockey. Love as I it. said, I love, I love Olympic hockey. I love World Cup hockey. I love international play for almost everything. Yes, I just love it because you're representing your country and you're going at it. You know, with a, a buddies you even are on teams with right. normally, but you're going as a, as a group from the same. I love that stuff. That's I do. great stuff. It's great hockey it. to watch, and you've got the best of the best on every team I know. too. It's and like I got to say, I cannot wait. I'm so excited that the season has started for hockey. Also, I was more excited than I thought I was going to be when I saw the game popped up. 
I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. I'm like, we've got 82 regular season games to watch. Yeah. There's generally you get to watch your guys three times a week, two, two to three two times to three. a week, yeah. right? Yeah. Two to three times a week. So we're going to be able to catch a gr- bunch of great games every week. You and I are going to be able to start talking about it every I, freaking day, definitely every other day. I love it. You know, that's I, I love it. You know, and and that's great because I still I still have got my my college football going on. Unfortunately, my my uh, and now I'm getting into um, pro football strictly for, you know. For fantasy, fantasy, but I'm trying to get more into into pro. Actually, liking the pro game, I like the I like the whole thing because of uh, f- uh, the fantasy football way better. I'm having so much fun; it's it's been ridiculous. So now I've got all this. All of a sudden, it's like my sports you're, fanaticism you're in has blown up. You're in heaven. Yeah, it heaven feels is like, in heaven. <laughs> it, I know. It feels like now you know maybe maybe I used to you know smoke a little bit of um, of uh, uh, sports weed, and now apparently I've moved to. Sp- Sports crack. <laughs> nice. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, to just you know, put, it, so, put it out there for you. How about this? We'll stay in uh we'll stay in Florida in hockey. So the yeah. Florida Panthers open up uh, their home opener last night against New Jersey. And for those of Devil you suck. the that uh remember uh, a couple weeks ago, the Marlins, they lost Jose Fernandez. Right. So check this out, dude. This gives me goosebumps. I'm getting them right now. You can see that. I um, I missed something apparently. Yeah, this is crazy wild, like oh, so so emotional. Last night, every player on the Panthers team right. pregame skated out with a, a number 16 on their back, oh, and nice. it said Fernandez on their jersey. And they've got a number 16 uh, sticker decal on their helmets. Pregame, shooting, warming up, warming up. Uh, they skate off, resurface the ice, they put on their regular jerseys, and then they, they play New Jersey. Uh, one to one. It, it, uh, regular time, a regular time, it ends in a tie, 1 1. So they go into overtime. Dude, check this out. So this is crazy. So who scores a game-winning goal? 16. Number 16 for the Florida Panthers, Alexander Barkov, scores a game-winning goal in overtime. And, like, the whole stadium was, like, upside Went down. Nuts. Yeah, like, holy crap. Like, you – and obviously New Jersey doesn't want to give away the game and right. let them win. But if you're going to do it <clears> – Like, what are the odds? Right. They, they pay homage and tribute to Jose Fernandez. They wear number 16 – Skates into a one-one tie. They go into overtime, and number sixteen for Florida, uh, Alexander Barkov scores the game-winning goal. And like you couldn't, you couldn't script that, put that in a movie any other way. Like right. one in a million, one in a trillion. Yeah, lifetimes, what are the chances? What are the chances? The of that odds happen? of that. So that was really crazy. Now, where do they play out of? They play um, when, right after you cross Alligator Alley. Right. Their stadium is right next to Sawgrass Mills Mall. You know, the right, mall so that's almost shaped, like Fort Lauderdale over there? It's northern. Uh, they call it Miami. It, I think it's more like Briarwood. Okay. You know, literally, as soon as you come through Alligator Alley, you have like one exit, and then the second exit is for Sawgrass Mills Mall, the mall that's shaped like an alligator, that big one. I've never seen never Oh, seen okay. Yeah. As soon as you go through Alligator Alley, you're you're – outskirts of miami really right um and literally it's uh the second exit and it'd be like putting a mall across the street from uh um utc right but where buffalo wild wings is on right. university it's literally like right there so it's not like in miami but it's right off the interstate right. it's it's a nice stadium i've been uh, oh have you been there once and uh hockey guy that, that's that's what i was about to say i'm yeah. like um you know what i ha- i've i have not been to a Except for Atlanta, I've never been to a pro bro, uh, pro hockey game. Really? And when I went to Atlanta, it was early in their in their in their uh, the Thrashers. Yep. Yeah, they were early in 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 the league, and it was the most boring thing I've ever witnessed. Atlanta didn't take too well to hockey yeah. at all. I mean, even are they when, gone? Are they, yeah, they they moved them to Winnipeg. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, they went. It to was it. it was the most boring thing I've ever seen in my life. Next to going to a pro basketball game. Pro basketball, I'll, I'll go. I mean, you know, the closest for us is Orlando, so that's a little bit of a hike. You, you, but... don't, re- you don't realize how small the court is and how big those guys are. Right. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a second. And you watch it in person and you're like, they look, everything looks so much bigger on TV except for the guys. Exactly. Yep. It's the weirdest thing. And then you look, you go, wait a second, the guys can make it how much? He literally just put his arm up and he's in the friggin' hoop. Yeah, he just... Put it in there. That's it. And he literally took two steps, and he's. I mean, it's such a small spot. I'm See, like, I don't know if I like watching it on TV better than I do in person. I think I do, just because of the drive. Like, I went down to a Miami Heat game uh, back when um, 
uh, Shaq was his last season in L.A., so I wanted to see Shaq play again. Saw him play, him and Kobe play against uh, Orlando a couple seasons before that, and just to see the Lakers play. And uh, to watch that live versus on TV, I, I think, see, hockey I love watching in person. Baseball, I like going in person. I won't sit yeah. through a baseball game on TV. I really won't. Oh, I, I will. And uh, But I do. I, I agree. I, I like to go to games. Basketball for me is the other way around. I think it I'd looks rather so just, much faster on TV. Yes, I'd rather watch it on it TV. It looks like it's on slow motion yes. in live. Bank, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, 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 yeah. and they're all lumbering. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I'm like, I thought these guys were fast. Now, football, I, it could be either. I don't mind watching it in person. I don't mind watching it on TV either. I, I got to say, um, depending on where your seats are, and now maybe because of the f- fact I'm getting old, um, I do like to watch it on TV. That matters. Uh, I love tailgating. There's nothing yes. better than tailgating. The atmosphere Time you can't of- beat, especially when it comes to college football now time of day matters too because all of our stadiums here in florida are open right so if it's a one o'clock game you know you're sweltering for three three and a half hours you know what though i love i love day games i love sports played in the sunlight i do i just do i love it but i don't like the heat and humidity right. man i hate sitting there you know because of course the games that i go to early uh, in the season you know uh even the bowl game you know the michigan uh florida game I don't have any white Michigan jerseys. I have the blue ones. Right. You know? So that's almost like wearing black, mm-hmm. and then you're sitting there from one till whatever the game's over, and, you, and I lose. If I drink forty pound or forty gallons of alcohol, I sweat out about sixty. Right. So you know, it's just the offsetting and the heat and humidity just doesn't play out in my favor. I, I I just I love I love day games, and actually my favorite my favorite games are noon games. I love the earlier the better. You get the yes. game over so you can party all day. All day. Yeah. I'm not much for the late night, the, the eight o'clock or the four. I hate to say this too, but I'm too much of a drunk for the for the late <laughs> That's why they don't ever play the Florida Georgia game at night. It's always a three thirty game, no matter no matter what's going when on. When was the last time Florida had a night game? Have they Oh like... night we, we play a lot of we play night games, but uh for some reason we're we're uh we usually play in the afternoon, big games at night. So, and talking about Florida, if, if you don't mind, uh, if yeah, you don't mind, let's jump that. over to that. Let me um, pull it up here. Have you seen that crap with LSU? Okay, so the the can you say irate? The for those of you that don't know, yesterday they, uh, LSU and Florida uh, came to terms on a November nineteenth game. They're buying out the smaller schools for that game. Now LSU, uh, it's going to be in Baton Rouge. It's going to be a home Ridiculous. game for LSU. LSU still has to play three SEC games in a span of thirteen days during that that time spat there first uh visiting arkansas on november 12th then they host florida on the 19th and then they close the season uh with a night game at texas a&m on the 24th now the gators 18th rank will end up essentially lose two home games out of this and lose 7.8 million dollars in projected revenue and ticket sales alone because of this and not even that they we come off of two, three, three SEC teams in a row mm-hmm. to now play them, and then go into Florida State right afterwards. Well, uh, LSU's schedule isn't even any better. So, uh, but, but, but here's the thing: it, all right, their season's over. It was our game, unfortunately, that we had to give up because of uh, the hurricane. Right, and the first thing LSU is like, "Well, it's your fault. You you cancel the game." I'm like, really? Because I remember when Katrina happened, we made some concessions with well, you guys. see, it was agreed to play on Sunday, and then Florida's like, yeah, we don't want to play it. it something I don't know what the reason was, you know, because it got moved to Sunday, and that was what the plan was. Right. And then I heard, like, literally Friday night, sa- no, Saturday morning that Florida, no, it was Friday night, that Florida canceled it all together, like, yeah, we don't want to play it. So I don't know what happened there or they why. Canceled, they canceled the game, Saturday's game, on Friday night. Right. Because the rain was supposed to be so horrible. Then it, they did. They got pounded with rain and all kinds of stuff. So they didn't want to play on Sunday because the the, uh, the field was trashed. Uh. Right? So then, but here's my issue. Okay, whatever you want to say for any of that crap, why isn't it a home game for Florida? At least, why is it not being played in Florida? Yeah. I mean, you, Florida and then, loses two home games. And they then, you eight. son of a bitch, you take that game away from us from being at home? Yeah. That's and put eight, it under the lights. Eight million dollars. You put it at eight o'clock lost. at LSU when everybody on the planet knows. Under the lights at LSU does not matter when you're playing them. The chances of winning in LSU under the lights are minuscule. It's a it's an important game for both because uh, 
LSU is only two and one in the SEC right now. So are they out as far as national championship? Yes. Yeah, they're out. But as far as being a contender in the SEC, they're still still there. So that game, I mean, it has to be played. It needs to be played. By the time LSU gets to play us, they're gonna be they're gonna have four losses. That they, they probably will. You know, and then the only thing they have to do, or, or the only thing they have to look forward to, is get to play us again at home for the second year in a row and under the lights. Now, definitely, well, th- I mean, I'm very upset. About I'm this. sure that's going to be reevaluated <laughs> moving forward. Like, hey, we, you know, considering what has happened in the series of events, our our future next couple games have to be in Florida. I don't know. I, I mean, I know when it when stuff like that happens, there's there's a type of insurance that these t- schools take out in case stuff happens. So Florida will recoup some money but oh i don't give a damn about the but, money the hell with them it's a bunch of rich people collecting money i don't give a damn about exactly it. but it just to see in general that the uh you know that it got put in lsu uh literally the second to last game of the season for lsu i don't know where it falls on florida schedule but it makes no sense to me. It's, it's florida so anybody who's got a ticket to that game just go to the game on a different day that's easier than saying because you think, well, well, then why don't you just do that and go to LSU? Because people who are getting those tickets are expecting to be at Florida. I can make it to Florida. I can't make it to LSU. No, you know. If yeah, I'm just looking up something here. No, no. If if, uh, if yeah, if you're a Florida fan, you're definitely upset to see this. You know, it. They obviously didn't agree to the terms, but they came to some type of conclusion that the game had to be played. Now, the details, how it got hammered out with, I don't know if the NCAA stepped in and said, okay, this is well, no, where the, and why. The, the, the uh, uh, SEC uh, commissioner. SEC. Uh, the SEC commissioner. Uh, it was up to him, and he's like, you guys just figure it out. No, that's why we have a commissioner, you idiot. You tell what's up. Because it should be, no matter what happens, it should be apples to apples, as close as you can get it. I understand the dates are paying the ass, and you're like, well, I play these guys, these guys, these guys. Gotta... Okay, but somewhere along the line, you have to make the game up, right? Right. But you can say, you know what? It's a 3.30 game. Okay, we'll keep it a 3.30 game. It's at Florida. Okay, we'll keep it at Florida. Those are things you can do. To leave it up to the teams, of course, that at that point, is going to be like, no, 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 we, we, we can't play there. We can, you know, you've had your chance. I, I could, I could already see how this conversation went down. You had a hurricane. You had your chance. Now we got to make it up later. We've already got, you know, X amount of road games, and because of where it's at in the schedule, because of fairness, I could just imagine yeah, how that even played if they out. say that we have X amount of road games, it doesn't matter because it you're not getting extra road games. No, you're just doing what you're supposed to do. It has something to do with probably that part of their season, I'm sure. Now Florida ends up with more road games. Right. You know? it, it's unfortunate. It really is. I mean, to have the commissioner say, you guys figure it out that no. I would have stepped in and said, look, we're going to play it on this date or this date. and At least put it in a neutral site then. Th- you if know, you're going to move it. Can, if you're going to make Florida go somewhere, make everybody go somewhere. Put them in Jacksonville. Put them, put them in Atlanta. Somewhere. Whatever. Yeah. I'll go somewhere else. Put me in Mississippi. Yeah. Make it a neutral it site. It shouldn't have been removed from the state of Florida. I would have put them at worst, Jacksonville. Um, it just makes no sense to me. And yeah. it, it, it's infuriating. And it makes no sense to me. Just go ahead and do it. And why would you? I'd like to know what the thought process was on that, making it a home game for LSU. Because, you know, like I said, the only thing I can c- conclude on that is because of the schedule that uh, – there, there we go. I kind of answered my own question. They play three games in thirteen days. Doesn't matter. Yes. Doesn't matter. No. But yes, it does. So they needed a rest. They need a rest stop in the middle. They're playing at home against Florida in the middle of those three games. The other two are on the road. There it is. To Tough. make it fair, I bet LSU was like, if you want to play us, then it's on our turf because of that reason right there. If not, forget it. it. it it's not that if you want to play, then then tough. Then we don't play them. Yeah. Then. Then we 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 you, have one you, game left. You need that game though. Not a, not at all because we go through the SEC championship game. It makes no difference. And you don't want to gamble if you want. Well, you want to. That's know. what I'm saying. I need to go through the. It doesn't matter because if I want to go to the national championship game, like I want to, I have to go through the SEC championship yeah. game. And you don't want to be so one no game less sitting out because you could be what five and one. I don't know how many divisional right. games you play. You'd be that one win less than the team above you. Then you're I, outside looking in. I don't think so because I think they they look at that and they go, you know what? This is not their fault for not having this game. 
they made the best they possibly can. And you would it's, almost it's have to have a, a divisional playoff at that point if you're tied. If you're one win less than whoever's in first place, but technically you're tied, you'd almost have to have a playoff before the SEC title game. Well, you know, we have to we have to play. Tennessee's playing Alabama. I think it's going to take care of itself anyway. Uh, and and I still I, I still have to play. I still have to play Georgia. So if we run through, Tennessee's going to lose. We end up with just a one loss. Then you know, we're looking. We're looking okay, and it's going to be an SEC game. And just to be fair, I mean, not to poo poo on Florida, but if Florida's sitting four and one in their division, and Bama's like, yeah, we're five and one. We have one extra one, even though, you know, whatever. Bama's got an argument. Hey, we're five and one in our in our division. You're you're four and one. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because then we'll play each other in the in the SEC championship. You're in game. the same division. No, we're not. You're not. No. No, you're not. So we'd be playing each other. So it would make no difference. Okay. Well, I think I because think at that at that point you're not looking at actual you know who's got more wins at that point who beat and at that point there's no conversation Florida won or Alabama won there's no argument no, I, it doesn't matter what I think if you are. if you're if you're a one loss and then the other divisional person team is one loss but has one more win because you played one last game. <sighs> That's you know every independent, uh, the Irish they don't have a playoff game. No, so they just get a once, good bowl game. Yeah, and that's once it. once we go through, but if they went through and didn't play, and they were still in the contention for the top four, they put them in, and then we'd have the same amount of games. Except one of our games we won would be the championship game, and we'd still have the same amount of ga- t- games as they did. It's a tough one. You I know? mean, it, I'm glad that they they have the game that they're playing. I, I just think don't you might think be right. right in any other in any other conference. A, you could have an argument. It, you're still going through the SEC. So if you go through the SEC with one loss, win the championship game, they're not going to give a damn. They're going to say, you know what? Okay, you're number four. You're in number four. Good luck. Depending on how the rest right. of it plays out. Because it's out. not like we lost. It's no. not like there was a loss, and that's not what the problem was. It was an act of God, and that's what happened. Well, I'm glad they get to make it up because yeah, so there, that doesn't doesn't end up being a scenario where you, you're sitting with a, a Florida at 4-1 and one in their division and then the other SEC team sitting 5-1 and one, I hope one it, extra I hope it, it sparks our guys so hard. At this point, I would be so I'd be so pissed. I'd be like, okay, you know what? We're gonna go into we're gonna go into Baton Rouge when we're not supposed to, and we're gonna go in there under the lights like we're not supposed to, and we are going to force feed you our helmets. That's what I that's what my that's what I would say to my guys. And if you want to make a statement, that's the statement game to yep. do it. You know, I want I'm gonna go in there and I'm going to stomp you guys. I want to beat you guys by 20, 21 points, and I'm just gonna keep hitting you guys until you guys go home and piss blood. Uh, you know, if you got an opportunity to run that up 40, 50 points, I, you, you know, have to. I wouldn't. I swear to God, I would still be going. If we were up by fifty points, I'd still try to score at that. Yeah, point. no. Forget it. Really? Statement. Okay. This is what you want? Okay. All right. You're trying to take advantage of us. Now here we go. We are going to absolutely. You know, chances are that's probably going to be a three point game. More than likely, right? It'll be close. You know, I'm being realistic yeah. because it's even even LSU at at not a good team this year is still LSU a good team. Yeah, and it's I still mean, it's, LSU at home, and it's still LSU at home under the lights with an interim coach too. Yeah, you know? yeah, with with you know things to fight for, right? You know, so, and not to mention that interim coach, if he wants the head coaching job, this is how you do it. Bingo. Which no, oh, that's I know, too. doesn't it? <laughs> it's it's a you know what it's it's, it's a, nothing different. It always seems I don't know, and, and I might be biased. I understand this. It always seems, no matter what, Florida gets so little respect, and everything always seems against Florida. All the time, and it either that works for them because then they they pull through and right. they, you know they go through all the hurdles and hoops and everything else that's thrown at them, or it's like so devastatingly stacked against them that it's just well, you're not surprised that they lost or didn't come out of whatever scenario because it just dealers got four aces and you've got you know yeah doesn't th- matter <laughs> four twos yeah. you know we go we go to uh, perfect example uh, in. Uh, uh, 96 uh, 06 we went up against ohio state they're like oh you guys should have even been there well it was our luck uh, lsu took out uh usc which was great yep. okay so that knocked us up to where we we're supposed to be oh you guys shouldn't be there really and then we handed out the biggest ass whipping in the history of bo- of the national championship game yeah oh well you know this guy got hurt immediately it's not my fault you guys are idiots we crushed you we held your heisman winner yep. to nothing he threw like 12 yards the entire game but oh, 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 you guys got lucky. Okay, great. Two thousand eight, we go in there. We're playing uh, Oklahoma. 
oh, you know, he got hurt. Uh, you know, that's not fair. Really? No, no. We crushed him to the point where we hurt him so bad he had to leave. Now, did I? is that the way I wanted to win the game? That's not the no, I did not want Bradford to go of out. Of course not. I wanted to play Bradford. So it's like even when you're winning. I know. It makes th- no sense. They, they've got a reason why. It's not just because Florida's good. No. No. I'm like, it oh, drives really? me nuts. You know, and then I get the, oh, well, you've never won in a, in a perfect year. I'm like, okay. We come through a tough division. What do you want me to say? Right. You know? Well, I'm kind of getting that little bit of backlash right now being a Michigan fan. Uh, who have you played? Get the hell out of here with that. Mm. Who's anybody played? Realistically, besides maybe one or two teams out there, but don't give me that you crap. Know, I'll, I'll, we, bitch, I'll we, bitch and moan about your 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 horrible, 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 horrible team. But uh, you guys, right now, if you were, and I said this earlier, Ohio State should be shaking in their boots because just watching the football being played. Yeah, I'm not saying who you're playing or whatever. You can argue that back and forth right. until you're you know, blue in the face. You guys are stomping like I haven't seen stomped in a while. Okay? And granted, yes, okay, a couple pushover games, but then you know, to, to it doesn't matter. You're, clo- you're shutting them out. We're and shutting. We always people say, down. we always say here. Look, the points are impressive. It matters, but nowhere near as impressive as the donut. All right. When you win seventy-eight to nothing, I don't give a damn who you're playing. That's that's impressive. That's yep. and the seventy-eight's impressive, but that means nothing in comparison to the zeros. And I th- I don't know if people understand that. I think they're like, okay, oh, he he won the game a hundred nine to ninety six. They put up hundred nine points. No, no, what are you talking about? They gave up ninety six. They gave up ninety six, yeah. or they won hundred nine to forty one. Okay, yeah, they put up a lot of points. They gave up forty one points. Right, because you give up a forty one points to an Ohio State, you're losing the game. To you a lot up, of teams, you give it up to Florida, you're losing the game. Yeah. You get exactly, yep. you know, yep. <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you, chances are you're giving up to a top 30 team. You're giving up 41 points to a top 30 team, you're probably going to lose. You could even say that arguably maybe top 50, yeah. realistically. I mean, come on, and that's a do, lot of points. It is. It really is. You know, so don't go telling me, oh, oh, a great team. No, no, no. You've got to be a great team on both sides. Yep. You know, very rarely can you do one and, and go. Yep. And if you are going to do it like that, chances are you're, it's a defensive team. Right. You know? Right. So at least if you're shutting them down. I mean, we got a mouthful of that from Wisconsin at home. I mean, we uh, we missed three field goals. We should have had nine more points, you know, just to win that game as close they as. They play it. Ohio State this week. Yeah, at home, too. And, uh, you know, naturally, Ohio State's the favorite in that. Uh, I'm a big Wisconsin fan right and now. And re- that makes two of us, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's let, what we should do. Sit around Saturday and watch that game. Oh, Badgers. I'm down. Jeez. I'm like, I got a big enough problem with freaking Mizzou this week. You know what? I think that's going to be a close game. For some reason, I got Dude, a Mizzou weird feeling. Plays, Mizzou plays great football. They play good. I mean, they have they immediately came to came to the SEC and immediately won a championship. We've been trying to pull them to you the know? Big Ten for a while because yep. they're a good team. It's a good school. Mizzou it's a good football is school. no joke. No, you do not. You do not close your eyes on Mizzou for a second Mm-mm. because they will end your they will end your year quick, real fast. They will. And A and M, same damn thing. Those both those those you know were, what? when they first showed up. I was like, okay. I'm like, well, welcome to the SEC. And both almost immediately within the first three years took right off. Took it off. They each won an SEC. They each won an SEC Missouri, championship game. Yeah, Missouri, Missouri was Missouri's just, first year. A yeah. and uh, I think was the third year. Yeah. I'm like, okay. I'm like, so they're 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 right where they're supposed to be. I was pretty. I, I gotta say. You know, SEC is good. You take a powerhouse conference and then you add those two to it. You, that's yeah. Forget it, man. Now, I'll tell you what, too. And I was I wasn't expecting them to pick up and go. So that's how good the conference is. Mm-hmm. When you're that good, you have to come in quick, and you're like, oh my god, we've got to play, or we're dead. Right. And they came out and played like crazy. And they're doing well. Yeah, they both have done very well. I think they've been both good adds to the to the conference. Absolutely, no. You know, like and now I said, looking back, po- I can't imagine not having them a anymore. power conference. And then you add those two on top of it. Yeah. Good lord, man! I'll tell you, if you could, if you could, if I could pick other teams from anywhere and be like, I want to add them in there, I'd be okay. I, I wouldn't mind as much as I hate. You know, you say you could easily do an Ohio State or Michigan and pull them in. I, oh Texas when they're playing well when they're playing pull them well in, yeah. you know on Oklahoma when they're playing well yep. that's the kind of teams you could pull in there to make them you know bigger but you know tell you the truth I don't know if you pull those teams in if they do do well I just don't know if you especially you, since they're so used to playing certain football I think they do all right because eventually they, now, they start doing well now they can tap into your recruiting pool uh, and Harbaugh just did that right. you know doing practices here in Bradenton and everyone else is like, whoa, 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 let alone the SEC. Like, dude, you, you popped up a tent in our backyard. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm recruiting. Mm-hmm. I'm showing off my stuff, mm-hmm. you know, pulling it out. Here you go. See? Look look, look, look what I have. Yeah, well, you haven't pl- played anybody down here. No, don't need to. I'm just going to take your boys. 
and pack them up and take them up north. That's right, and they're going to be miserable and leave immediately. <laughs> miserable and leave immediately. This is this is Michigan. Oh, this is the good part of Michigan. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is the good part. Oh yeah, this is the good part. It does not get any any better. Well, spe- Anywhere you go. Speaking of SEC and and Florida and stuff, so. I, I, talked about this off here for a minute it's a, a big day for oklahoma state football now look this is gonna this get, is crap. this is gonna get pooped on right away and i get it uh the cowboys now officially have won a national championship from 1945 they uh they've been awarded uh, a national title 71 years after the fact because a decision was made by the american football coaches association uh, it's a committee that was put together. Who are these chumps? It's a committee that was put together to retroactively select schools who deserve the national championship from 1922 through 1949. Now, uh, the first coaches poll came out in 1950. Can I ask you a question? Sure. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but <clears throat> does it explain in the article? Because that's that's why I probably should interrupt. But does it explain what the relevance is? And I mean that honestly. Gotcha. Uh, it was to finally put to bed, uh, more or less, uh, to select schools who deserve the championship. But like, I don't, I don't understand what that does for the school to say, hey, we retroactively got a championship from 75 years ago. My question is, when they're done with this, does that same group of people go and, find, and, and go ahead and rate uh, the best apostles and make sure they put them in the correct order? Well, I mean, Is that happening next? For some reason, it's being brought up, and I hear it amongst um, you know my arguments with some of the people that I get into it with, you know, online or in person. Because uh, back in 1922 through 49, hell, from 1901... Okay, Michigan went on a four-peat national championship. They won it from 1900, oh, wow. 01, yeah, 02, and 03. Right. Okay? Yeah, but it was, you know, them, Notre Dame, Army, Navy, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's four or five teams, and that's why they want to put clarity to it and put this finally to bed. Right. Now, 1945, the Cowboys went 9-0. and Finishing with finishing their season with a thirty three to thirteen win over St. Mary's in the Sugar Bowl. Right now, unfortunately, Oklahoma State was one of a few teams to go undefeated. Uh, at the time, Army finished ranked number one at nine and zero. Bama ten and zero at number two. Navy finished seven one and one at number three. Indiana four at nine zero and one, and the Cowboys finished five at nine and zero. Now. Technically, that's a five-way split for the national championship in 1945. So that oh, is. By the, the way, what uh, 35 teams? The entire country playing. But you do need an undecisive winner. I get that. Here's the thing: uh, Were they even allowed to throw the football yet at that time? <laughs> it was illegal to throw to pass the football. I'm back sure then. they were then. I don't think I don't, so. I don't know. 1922. I don't think so. So, as the, all of that isn't enough, Oklahoma State not only won a national championship in football, they did in basketball now in the same season. So that takes away Florida's uh, first school in history to win a championship in both sports. So, you know, that puts them technically second to do it, even though they did it first nationally recognized. But uh, the whole reason to this is so that uh, more or less to say, okay, during that era we can weed out the, the three, four, five-way splits because that's that's what happened then. And maybe you look at even uh, just before they started doing the BCS, you know, Michigan had a national championship in 97, but we shared it with Nebraska. Well, can you, do you want to go back and actually say, okay, here's the clear-cut winner? You can't go back because it's not at the same – if you can't make a decision on something – if you're not in the middle of it, if you don't see what's going on. Because there's stuff that people don't remember. There's That's, things that happen that are like, oh, God, I forgot about that. Imagine if baseball ended right now. And you say, okay, well, the clear-cut champion is Chicago, the Cubs. But Toronto's doing really well. And they beat certain teams at the end of the season. So they're going to share the World Series. No, it doesn't make sense. No. You need a clear-cut winner. No. Unfortunately, they didn't but, have a playoff. That's not, they didn't that's have one versus two. If you needed a clear-cut winner, then you would have them back then. Well, we weren't Why smart you, back we then. We can't go back in time and change things. <laughs> there was no NCAA. Right. There was, I mean, it was just... There were, there were all, they didn't have nearly as many teams to play. They didn't play nearly as many games. I get all so that. So none of that, none of well, that stuff has anything to do with it. Well, they still played nine, ten like, games. But... Right, but you're saying, well, you've got to go back and make sure it's all it's all you know, apples for apples. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Right. With the exception of it's oranges to potatoes. It's not even close. No. Because it hasn't. You, 
there are plenty of teams that weren't even did, didn't even have te- uh, that. Uh, there are plenty of schools that didn't even have teams back then. Right. So how are, how are you going to go ahead and change it? Too bad you can't go. In fairness, like okay, Florida, you didn't have a football team then. Uh, you know, South Florida, you didn't have a football team you then. You weren't relevant. You, can't you go weren't back around. And speculate. You can't go back and speculate. It's. I I get what you're saying, and it it's weird that they're doing this, but they're uh, they're definitely uh, making case as to why. Uh, you know, some teams should have it, and why it shouldn't be a five way split. You know, you go look at the record books. Who's the national champion? Nineteen forty five. It's a five way split. That's stupid. Pick one of them. Yeah, it's seventy one years later. I get it. You should leave history alone. But hey, by the way, the day, by the way, all those schools. How many of those people? How many? How many kids who should have been playing at that on that uh, team weren't there because they were dead because of World War Two? How are you going to go ahead and disrespect all that and say, oh, no, hell with it? Yeah, I mean... You know? Come on, are you kidding yes, me? Yes, but no. It's sports at that point. Ridiculous. Does not matter that much to me? No. That, you know... If, they're making up champions. They're making champions up. They're weeding out teams that shouldn't are have they been going to go, Are they going to go back to... Are they going backtracking when um, oh, uh, uh, Auburn had to share the national championship? When Nebraska had to share the championship? Does it fall between 1922 and 1949? Exactly. You know? No, it <laughs> no, was it afterwards. Yeah. If you could share them afterwards, what the hell is the problem with sharing them before? Don't understand it either. It's ridiculous. It, it's weird. And by the way, since 1940, whatever year it is, 49 or, or 49? 49. Uh, there have been plenty of times that there has been a, a shared championship. Oh, yeah. That's why it's happened way too many times. So, okay. In the last 71 years, it probably happened 70 out of the 71 years. So what's the, so what's the issue? You know, obviously, so there's the a, it is. there's a reason for why they're making a clear cut winner now. I don't know why, but you know, we're gonna find that somebody dumped a lot of money because they're trying to. There, there's some there's something in it. There's somebody somebody wants something. You know that that 1922 through 49. So that's a 27 year block. Yeah, there there's a reason. And why 1922? Football was played before 1922. Let's take a look here. National. You know. Football was played since the late 1800s, right? Yeah. No, like I of said, of course. You know, the first year there was only four teams. Are we going to go back there and make sure that they understand that? Oh, their national championships. That really, that stuff really. Four teams. I mean, I hear that a lot too. People are just like, oh, when you know, huff and puff about Michigan. Yeah, we had a four peat. We won four in a row. When was the last college team that won four in a row? Well, it was back then, and there was only six schools, and you played only three. Uh, three. Um, get now, the hell now, out of here! That's tough crap. That I, that's I when it happened. I understand and that's how this it history. Happened. Yeah, I un- understand the history, but that definitely carries a lot less, a lot less water now, than, than anything. Yeah, I yeah. get that now, but at the end of the day, you can't help history. That still history. When, when the league started, and there was only six teams, you're still the champ. Yep. You beat five oh, five other teams. Okay, so like for example, to go back to that Michigan thing there. Uh, 1900, 1901, 2, 3, and 4. We were uh, undisputed champs, 01, 02. 03 and 04, we, we shared it. We shared it with Princeton, and we shared it with Pennsylvania. Imagine that. At 1919, there was a 1, 2, 3, 4 team split. Harvard, Illinois, Notre Dame, Texas a So then why does this go all the way back to 1900, 19, at least? 22. So you start from there. Cal and Cornell split it. 1923, Illinois and Michigan split it, and they're both in the same conference. 1924, Notre Dame. 25 was Bama. 26, Bama and Stanford. Uh, Let's see here. 27 was Illinois and Yale. 28 was Georgia Tech. 29, Notre Dame. 30 was Bama and Notre Dame. 31, uh, Southern Cal. 32 was Southern Cal. 33 was Michigan. 34, Minnesota, 35, Minnesota, 36, Minnesota. Three-peat for them. Jeez. You know, going all the way up to that 49, 1949 era, damn. Uh, Michigan, Notre Dame, Army, and Minnesota ran that for the better part of those 20 years. And you know what? From, well, you know, and, from 33... That's what happens when you have a, a pool of 20. From 33 through 1949, uh, they've already gone back and declared AP national champions. It's already been decided. Wow. Why not all the way to 1900? They started... Weird. I don't it's know. ridiculous. Something something happened that I'm not aware of, so... I, I guess at this point, we should probably go on a break. <laughs> totally got away yeah, from us. Hour. We, got, we, got, we got spewed in with 
screaming about Florida getting screwed by LSU. But, uh, yeah, you think we should probably take a break? Yeah, we'll take a break. After that, we'll come back. We'll uh, touch on the top 25 games and then roll over into some NFL football. This is the Brian Gould Show Sports Edition. We'll be right back. This is Chuck from the BS Show. I wanted to take some time to talk about a great charity organization, The Honor Flight. This organization flies our veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit those memorials dedicated to honor the service and sacrifices of themselves and their friends. Please come out and drink some beers at Hurricane Mike's on the last Saturday of every month from 1 to 6. Hurricane Mike's has a guest bartender at each event, 50-50 raffles, liquor baskets, and silent auctions. The bartenders even donate all the tips they make that day. Hurricane Mike's is located at 2639 Mall Drive in Gulfgate. Last month, Hurricane Mike's raised over 1100 bucks for the honor flight. From everyone here at 444 Radio and Hurricane Mike's, we want to thank you for your support of our vets. Hey, this is Chuck from the BS Show. I want you guys to go check out the best Italian restaurant I've ever been to, Dolce Italia. It's at 6551 Gateway Ave. Their phone number for reservations, 941-921-7007. Guys, when I say this food's amazing, I've been all over the country, all over the world. This is the best Italian food I've ever had. Authentic, unbelievable stuff. Gotta go check it out. Hi, I am Tiziana. I come from uh, Naples. I own uh, Dolce Italia, Italian restaurant in uh, Golf Gate, 6551 Gateway Avenue. Come to try our uh, wonderful food. Mangia bene, ridi spesso, ama molto. Eat well, laugh often, love much. Finally, you can get your Saturdays off to the start they deserve. From 10 to noon, each and every Saturday, tune into the only place where you can listen to the Dayton and G Show, right here on the 444 Radio Network. Weekends were made for sports, and that's exactly what we will give you. Hi, I'm George Bennett of the Dayton and G Show. Other sports talk shows might know what they're talking about, Dayton and I just think we know, and that makes us very dangerous. So put a little danger in your Saturday mornings from 10 to noon right here on the 444 Radio Network, the Dayton and G Show. Golfgate, Sarasota, it's time to eat, and there's only one place to go. Ham Heaven and Devil Dogs, 2647 Mall Drive in Golfgate. Try the one-of-a-kind filet mignon sliders or the award-winning Reuben sandwich. Voted best in the state of Florida. Ham Heaven and Devil Dogs is open Monday through Saturday till 3 a.m. So after the bars close, you can get some of the best food in Sarasota. Call in and place your order today at 941-923-2514. That's 941-923-2514. Check them out online at hamheavenanddevildogs.webs.com or on facebook.com slash hh and dd how you doing this is chuck from the bs show i would like to tell you about a great company sarasota sign machine llc the exclusive sign and print sponsor for 444 radio a sign of quality you can trust located at 601 north washington boulevard celebrating six years in business and over 20 years of experience in sarasota if you need signs, banners, vehicle magnets, custom design, neon repair, business cards, printing, and more, trust the Sarasota Sign Machine. Look, let's be honest, you have so much more to think about when running your own business. Call us at 941-302-4275, check us out on Facebook, or at sarasotasignmachine.com. A sign of quality you can trust. Tell them the BS Show sent you. Hey guys, how we doing? This is Evan from the Bee and the Soup Bed Show. I'm here with Rita from J-Dubs Brewing Company, and we're uh, in studio. How are we doing today, Rita? Good, how are you? Excellent. Hey, I know you have a fantastic brewery over there. Please tell me a little bit about it. The brewery itself is, has a tasting room. It has 10 tap lines, so you can find anything that you want, from a light to a dark flavor. So whatever you like, you can get it? Absolutely. we got a flavor for you. Perfect. Also, tell me a little bit about the beer garden I'm hearing so much about. we got a big backyard out back. Uh, we're kid-friendly. We're dog-friendly, so you can come bring your family and friends and just have a good time, play some games, and drink some beer. Excellent. And then you guys got food? Absolutely. We got food trucks every day around 5 o'clock. Um, we're open Wednesday through Sunday, noon to midnight. Excellent. Hey, I hear a rumor that you guys do something cool over there on Wednesdays. We do. We have free yoga on Wednesday evening starting at 6.30. Come hang out and drink a beer and stretch it out. And that sounds like a great way to spend a Wednesday, <laughs> I'll tell you. It's 1215 Mango Avenue, Sarasota, Florida, uh, 941 955 
888-888-2739. And what about social media? Go to jdubsbrewing.com and you'll find everything right there. You guys are by far the best brewery in town and we're proud to have you guys uh, as our sponsor. Come on out there, have a drink with us and we'll uh, sit around and have a good time. Cheers, guys. Hi, I'm Dr. Sean Stringer. Me and Dr. Philip Nikeo are the newest members of the 444 radio lineup. We'll cover weight loss, health issues, mental health issues, and we'll talk with top health, wellness, and personal development gurus in the industry. You can even call in with your questions and much, much more. Trust me, I'm a doctor Wednesday nights from 7 to 9 on 444 Radio. Hello, this is Captain Sherman of Paradise Boat Tours, and if you're looking for a great adventure on our beautiful local waters, then we are the boat tour for you. Check out our website at SeaDolphins.com. We leave seven days a week from Bradenton Beach Pier on beautiful Anna Maria Island. It's fun for the whole family, and yes, we see wild dolphin 95% of our tours. Paradise Boat Tours, call us at 941-465-8624. Like us on Facebook or go to SeaDolphins.com. Here, Flipper. Evan, we've lived here six months and this bathroom still looks terrible. You're supposed to help me remodel it by now. I know. You just know how busy I am, though. Busy? We've got to get this done. If I can't do it because I don't have time and you don't have time, what are we going to do? I know who to call. Hello, my name is Stephen Dennis. I own a business here in town called Needaman2 LLC. My email address is needaman2 at gmail.com. My number is 941-232-2776. Again, that's 941-232-2776. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. What a great idea. So, Evan, you want to make the other announcement? Oh, I know you're excited and happy. We do have a fantastic new sponsor. New sponsor, absolutely. We are now very lucky to have Rico's Pizza as Ooh. a sponsor for yeah. 6547 Gateway Avenue in Golf Cake. They're open from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. They've been there 17 years. Uh, going jump anywhere. online at ricospizzatogo.com. Give them a phone call at 941-922-9604. We did find out today. That you mentioned the uh, 44 Radio or the BS show from 44 Radio, you will get 20% off your tab. Give me a phone call, guys, 941 922 9604 or Rico'sPizzaToGo.com. Hey, this is Paulie from the BS show. When I'm out and about having too many, it happens to us all. There's only one cabin service I call. It's my right. 941-400-6606. No more three-time surcharges. No more drivers that don't speak English, don't know where you're going. They pick you up. They take you home safely, clean cars. They're professionals. They know exactly what they're doing. And when you're riding with my ride, don't forget to mention the BS Show. 20% off your ride. Chucky, on occasion, will have too much. Not me, Paul. These guys are the best. They're what you want to call. They will take care of you. 941-400-6606. My ride. It's not your ride. It's not his ride. My ride. It's my ride. Welcome back. This is the Brian Gould Show Sports Edition on 444 Radio. We'll stick with some uh, college sports here. Good old college football in particular. Let's, uh, let's go with our picks for these games coming up. Uh, by the way, can I ask, because I was gone there for the first hour, did you guys go over NFL stuff? No. No? Saved it for the end. Very okay, cool. Best for last. That's just my question. Booyah. Dookie Dookie on the road to take on Louisville. Duke? Do- dookie Dookie. Dookie Dookie. <laughs> Dookie uh, showed me something. Louisville by 23. 23, huh? This is what I see. Yeah? I- ask Kevin. I've been on that, a roll lately. That, huh? might, be, uh, that I, might be light. I got 34 on CBS Sports. No, I'm just, no, I'm just, that's the same. That's oh, you're picking prediction. a score. I got you, got you. Okay. Uh, Dookie on the road. Duke, you know, to beat uh, kind of a pushover Notre Dame, but 34 points at home for Louisville. Yeah, I could see that. They've got a reason to run that score up now since the Clemson loss, so I could see that. Uh, definitely like Louisville at home. NC State 
goes on the road to Clemson. I heard you guys talking about this yesterday. NC State's going to get thumped. But Murdo- but Murdoch said... Yeah, well, was he wearing his NC State gear or not? He was the day before, yeah. yeah. Okay. On Wednesday he was. If you hear some ruffling and some... it's Because we're all chowing down right now. I've got some horribly salted pumpkin seeds that claim that they're Uncle, sim- simply salted. But. You know, he took NC State, but, you know, he also took uh, L.A. to lose, so. Yeah. We go on skids. He also took the Broncos last night. How'd that work out for him? No, I didn't. I did. Oh, you didn't? You were with me? Mm-hmm. You were in the Chargers? I'm like, in the Pickums League, yeah, I took the Chargers. Chargers are playing good football right now. Oh, when we get to the NFL, do you still have last week's numbers? I never knew what I what I picked. Uh, you, weren't here. you know what? I have them written down, but not with me. Okay. Ah. Uh, Crap. Sorry, back to college. Uh, West Virginia at Texas Tech. Texas Tech, one point dog at home. Picking that one to be close. Um, West Virginia is playing good football, but I like Texas Tech at home. I think it's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be a pick them. Uh, coin toss. Yeah. Three that, point game. That might even that. change by game time tomorrow. That might be even. But I do like Texas Tech at home. Kansas State at Oklahoma. Now Oklahoma, jeez, man. They've had one hell of a roller coaster season. The odds on favorite to win the the Big Twelve, and uh, you know they've had a couple. I don't know if they'd be devastating losses, but enough to. They're horrible. Although <laughs> they win it because they're at, they're at home. They win, they win at home, and that's just. Sorry. I think that you know six points. They are. 13 point favorite at home. I you know what? They'll win and they'll be back in the Big 12 title hunt pretty quick. Western Michigan ranked number 24 goes to Akron and they are a 12 point favorite. <coughs> That's one thing about those uh, MAC teams there. You get you get one team that goes on a run 6 and 1, 7 and 1 and all of a sudden you you see them playing in a in a big conference uh not conference, big, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Bowl game. All of a sudden you see him playing at Oklahoma in the Mighty's Titus Bowl or and then, somewhere. And, then, and they get dismantled. Get destroyed. So it's cool to see a, a MAC team ranked, but it's just a number that, you know, that <laughs> they could be ranked two. And, you know, that's BS. So game that shouldn't really matter, but it, it matters because they're top 25. I take offense to that, especially considering my team is 18th. Florida State is 13th. So I take real offense with these stupid-ass well, numbers. guess what? Western Michigan is in the same 25 class as the Gators right now. That is unbelievable. Bama at Tennessee. That is the uh, the big one on the map for college game day this week. No, game day is uh, Wisconsin for Wisconsin-Ohio State, I believe. Yeah, because Wisconsin's number five or something like that. Is that right? Uh, this is one versus nine, and it's going to be two oh, versus nine. seven. So, or two versus Either ten. way, that, that's fine being at either one of those. Yeah. Here's my thing with Tennessee game. No matter what, I'm going to win. One of those lousy, one of those horrible teams that I hate are going to lose, and then it makes no difference, you know, for the other one. So, because I, I'm still going to go ahead and do what I have to do to get the national championship game. So, the hell with it. You want Alabama to win, though. You do. It, it would be better... In the long run, but if we get to see them lose, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, yeah, because they're in the West. Tennessee goes right. two SEC losses. We win, boom. Now we're back in the control. You're back into it. Right. As long as we go, as long as we go through and run it, we're going to be fine anyway. Because Tennessee's going to, they still have to play. Tennessee still has to play uh, Ole Miss, and they've got somebody else too that they have to play. Now, in a scenario like this, I just want to role play this out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Tennessee loses, right? Eventually, Bama plays Texas A&M, and they lose. They right. lose to Texas A&M, okay? The West sorts itself out. East sorts itself out. And you have Florida playing Texas A&M for the SEC title game. Right. Now, oddly enough, I mean, we've seen a lot of movement in the top 25, pretty much from I've six never seen, down. I've never seen anything like from that. From six down, we've seen a ton of movement. One through four, one through five has been kind of the same-ish. One through three. Okay. Um Florida wins out, and you play Texas A&M, okay? Now, Florida's at 18, and you win out, and the other teams keep winning. You might jump up to 12, maybe 10, you know, somewhere in there, okay? Not trying to discredit them. No, no, okay. You take 
Florida, they win the SEC championship. It all matters on the SEC championship game. Okay. And you're, you're sitting... A&M will be uh, undefeated, can, right? Hypothetically, at that right? point. At yeah. that point, if now, they beat Alabama? Can, you know, take the winner of the SEC championship game, right? and it ends up being Florida. And you're sitting at 9, 9 or 10. Does that SEC title game give you enough credibility to leapfrog seven spots every day to be of the week twice on the, Sunday uh, the put in that final four talk every every day because this twice is what on Sunday. you know looking at the schedule in the remainder part of the season you could see an SEC championship team sitting at nine or ten nationally ranked not in the top four mm-hmm. that title game gives you enough credibility to jump that many spots just Spe- just asking especially when you take out an undefeated absolutely yeah Man, could you imagine though? I really think if the Gators don't lose for the rest of the season, though, before like they beat they beat Florida State going into uh, the SEC championship game, they're going to be no worse than seventh or eighth. Right? But, you know, and I don't think jumping four spots is what, that big of a deal from what, that position. I could see that, but nine ten. Ugh. Check this out though. On top of it, I think it's going to end up working in our advantage. As much as I hate the LSU situation, that's going to end up even helping out more because LSU is a crap team, but they're going to go. They're a horrible team, and no matter what they are at that point, I don't care how many losses they have, they're still going to say, wait a second, they had to go into... You almost need them to win all the way through till that point and beat them. Well, you always need everybody to win except yeah. for you. I mean, that's always better for you anyway. Against you, yeah. You know? Yeah. You want everybody to be undefeated until you come to town and crush their bumps. Right. Right? That, mm-hmm. that's, that's Ideally, that's the best way to go. By the way, I don't think Tennessee loses again after Bama. They've got South Carolina, Tennessee Tech... So they'll, they'll Kentucky, win out. Missouri, uh, Missouri could do it. Could maybe. I'm worried about is that is that at Mizzou that's or Tennessee? Oh no, they'll and win then at home. Vandy. So most likely yeah. Alabama's yeah. it. Yeah. Damn. What's uh, and Alabama will beat them. Man, what are the odds? Though I mean, Bama wins. They went out. Whatever. But well, it looks like <clears throat> depending on what happens in the Alabama game. Let's say Alabama beats Tennessee. Then that Alabama A and M game is for the West. Right. The next week. Right. That's going to be awesome. I think that A and M. I think A and M is playing for no matter what. I think they're the best team in the SEC right now, personally. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right now, yeah, right now. Yeah, I we're going to find out that. next week. Yeah, but. yeah, we're going to find out. We'll find out quick. now. You know, regardless of who comes out of that. Well, let's just say Bama wins. They win out. They go undefeated. They go in the SEC title game and they lose at one to whoever out of the East, Florida. Okay. That if they're it would one, only matter to Florida. Well, I'm saying if they're one, Florida's ten. If Florida beats them, you can't see Florida leapfrog from ten to four. Now in that scenario, yes, absolutely, okay. yes. But if you've got a, a you know, a and M, and M goes and M's got to be take out A&M. and M's got to be in the top three at that point. Mm. Not if they to, just took out number one. Yeah. Right. They have to go through number the, one to get there. To get there, regardless of whoever it, you know, if and who. Florida plays out of that West for the SEC title game. They have to be one or two to get get in there. And A and M's what uh, seventh? They are. Why do I not seventh or tenth? They're in the top ten, right? A and M. I think they are. Top A and M. They're ninth or eighth. Ninth. There you go. Eighth. Eighth. There you go. So they go through that. They if they're number eight, they beat number one. They end up in the top three. Yeah, they're undefeated still, so they're absolutely you know, got to be so, in the top. It doesn't matter. We play one of those teams. By the time they get there, they'll be at least top three either way, either number one or number three. If you go with the AP poll, they've got them at six. There you go. It's even better. Even better. Um, it's Here's once again, once again, the one thing I do like about Florida. It's always ours to win or ours to lose. Yeah. So I much prefer to have it in our own hands. Then let's say Tennessee runs through, and then we have to worry about like a a Vandy knocking them off right. by accident. You right. Know? By the way, the only teams that are technically out of it in the West are Mississippi State and Arkansas. Were they zero and two? They're uh, one and two and zero and two in the, in the conference. Ole Miss is one and one. LSU is actually still two and one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They the still conference. got it. They got still a shot. technically they're not out of it yet. I know mm-hmm. what you're saying. So yeah, you want LSU to win mm-hmm. until until oh, that. The we, we do. We want everybody to win until we crush their bones. That's just the way it is. Yeah. But. I mean, you know, Tennessee. It's uh, between Florida and Tennessee at this. Unless Tennessee loses and Florida loses, then you got oh, you know two lost Tennessee, two lost Florida, two lost Georgia, two lost Kentucky, and then Holy things get crazy. Well, hang on. Georgia only has one loss, right? 
Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's no, right. They caught no, their they're 2-2 two two in the right, conference. Tennessee game. That's right. But Tennessee's got the tiebreaker, though, right now over Florida, correct? As of, well, yeah, because, because they the, beat the, us. Right. And they beat Georgia. Right. And they beat Kentucky. They, well, they we, will beat Kentucky. Well, we beat Kentucky. Yeah. We're going to take out Georgia. Once again, that uh, that uh, Florida-Georgia game every year, it's always huge. So, and then... What is it? Huge. <laughs> it's huge. Kansas at Baylor. Baylor quietly creeping up there. They're 11th in the nation right now. Mm-hmm. Home game for them. That should be an easy win. Miami got a little bit of a heartbreaker loss last week to Florida State. They're home against North Carolina, and I think North Carolina gives them a run for their money. North Carolina's for real, too. Mm-hmm. They, they, they had a bad game, and they lost. Yep. Uh, and that was against... Who beat them just last week? The, um, it was, I want to say it wasn't Florida State. Florida State took out Miami. It was was it the Irish? No, it wasn't the Irish. Who, the hell, who just going beat North super Carolina? Slow on me here, jeez. North Carolina just got beat by somebody. God, I can't. Getting was it Tennessee? No. Shit, I don't. I don't remember. Anyway, Tennessee took a, took a, a a heartbreaker. They 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 got beat. But I think uh, North Carolina. Virginia still, Tech. Oh, that's right. Virginia, Virginia. Tech locked the dog. Was it Virginia Tech or Virginia? Virginia Tech beat oh, them Tech, thirty-four right. to three. Yeah, that's a bad beat. But they've been playing good. Ge- they've been playing good football. They had a bad game, so that should be a good. Uh, that should be an exciting game in Miami. I think that's a rebound game personally for North Carolina. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they win that game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Wake Forest at Florida State. Yeah, snoozer there. Florida State all the way. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. I, I don't know what's going on with Florida State this year. Their their basket case is in the head right now. So, yes, they should win that game. But I'll tell you what. I would not be surprised if they get if they take another loss to a crap team. And it might not a, be Wake. And that's a conference game too. So that that's yeah. a very meaningful game, more ways than one. Nebraska on the road at Indiana. Uh, Cornhuskers tenth in the nation, quietly creeping in at ten. They are, yeah, that's true too. And they're only a three-point favorite in Indiana, so you know odds maker has Florida's uh, got no love for Nebraska. Mm-mm. Well, None. Indiana plays tough at home. They're not great, but they play Bastards. tough. Bastards yeah. still pissed about ninety-five. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia Tech on the road against Syracuse. Um, Va Tech will kill Syracuse. They should. Syracuse, Syracuse looks horrible. horrible this season. Utah, at Oregon State, Utah. Should, They've been should, playing solid football. Should do just fine. Of course, Missouri at Florida. That's that's a game that I those are one of the games that worry me. And that's a four o'clock game too. It's mm-hmm. a little bit later than usual than your your twelve or one o'clock. So, um, I don't know if they're holding out just to give that time zone difference. <laughs> you know, let Mizzou uh, wake up a little bit or what? But that, that's a little weird that it's a little bit later game. Um, th- another good top twenty-five matchup here: Mississippi, Ole Miss at Arkansas. Yep. By the way, Arkansas, God damn, they've had they've been putting out some good football. Yeah, you know, Ole Miss, with the exception of last week, I had them beating Bama at home. I, I thought it'd yeah. be a lot closer than what it was. I was kind of disappointed to see that. They, it was yeah, a letdown. They, they, they did, but you know what though? Uh, Alabama put up a good game. Yeah, they did. You know, which is I why I think Alabama is probably number one in the country still. I think that's the most complete game that Bama's played right so so far this season. Uh, I'll tell you. Um, Old Miss, though, they've had some heartbreakers and they've had a tough. They've had. I can't believe they have the losses they they have. I still think they're a good football team. That's going to be a very interesting. That's going to be an exciting game to and, watch. And you know their losses are learning losses too. So yep. you know for them to be favored into this game, I, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they they actually. Uh, man, Arkansas looks good though. That might be a lot closer. Oh, I, I definitely could see that being you know a, a three five point game. Yeah. Uh, Kicking making a big difference. Who gets who gets the uh, the running game going? That's going to be a big deal. And ideally, who might get the ball last? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tulsa is going on the road at Houston. Houston with the you know big upset on them last week. Uh, you know, Houston is going to bounce back. Houston's a great football team. Yeah, it is. They lost. Hey, it happens. It stinks because I was quietly pulling for them to be one of those outside teams undefeated. Yeah. You know, your Boise's and. And uh, uh, TCU's. You know, I don't like it. Uh, TCU kiss my ass. Boise kiss my ass. <laughs> Houston, though, I got to say, I was like, you know, good solid football, not flashy. Don't bitch and moan. They're just there playing football, doing their jobs, doing what they're supposed to do, and getting yep. it done. That I, I I respect that. 
you know, Bo- Boise State, I understand they had to try to make a little bit of noise because they thought they were taking it on the teeth. But, you know, with the exception of one football game, <coughs> they have done nothing. And speaking of Boise, they're hosting Colorado State. That should be an easy win for them at home. Mm. And then uh, Ohio State at Wisconsin. That I I'm, am going to go buy some Badger stuff this weekend. I'm wearing my Red I'm not going to wear it. I'm, I'm wearing, not going to wear it. I'm wearing my Red Red Wings shirt in favor of the the Badgers. Oh, I hopefully. can't. I got I got to wear my. I messed up once, and I went to a, a TCU. Oh uh, no, I'm sorry, a ECU game in Carolina because uh, we went to go see my wife's grandmother. And her uncle got us some t- tickets to, this, to the game. And when I woke up, they had shirts laid out for me. And I'm like, ah. I was playing uh, South Carolina Ooh. the first year that Spurrier took over. Or second year that Spurrier took over for South Kakalaka. And we went to this game. And I'm like, okay, we're playing South Carolina. Florida will crush them. So I went ahead and put on the ECU uh, shirt just to, just to be you know, <laughs> solidarity with the family. I'm right. trying to act nice because her, gran- her grandmother hated my guts. What hated my guts? Literally, she's in the hospital being you know uh, being absolutely horrible as she's you know she was to me anyway. And she'd like pull Melinda in, and I walk in. She goes, "When are you finally gonna marry my granddaughter? When are you gonna make her into an honest woman?" I'm like, "You old." Whoa! Oh my God, she was. She, I hate. I did not like her. Wow. She wasn't a bad woman. I just didn't like the bitch. Anyway, so I love you, Melinda. I love you. But um, <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, kind of. Kind of. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> we went, and I, I wore the EC, the ECU stuff. By the way, have you ever been? To, have you ever been there to ECU? No. Okay. The Pirates, right? Yeah, the Pirates. Okay. What a great college town. Yeah. And, and what, what city is that in? That's uh, Greenville. Does that sound right? Sound. Green, you know what? Green, I, now that you Green, say that, something like that. Something like that. We were going, and uh, fifty cent beers, fifty cent you know, beers, dollar twenty five drinks. Ooh, I'm like, yeah, baby. I wouldn't have made it to the door. Oh my god! Well, we almost didn't. <laughs> and anyway, so I went and I, I wore I wore the clothes I wore the shirt, and we ended up losing that that day. And I vowed I would never not wear. Oh, so Florida my lost that day. We lost that day. So East, you got destroyed. I forget who the hell they were playing. They got destroyed. That's also the same night that I went out in the bar with the bar with my wife. And Georgia got beat by oh no oh wait no the next time we went in that's right the next time we went back it happened to be uh, Georgia was playing South Carolina Spurrier was there and we're sitting at the bar and uh, we're drinking beers and I look over and Georgia gets beat by Spurrier once again and uh, all of a sudden the bartender's giving me crap he's like hey man what'd you do I'm like what are you talking about he's like why is your girl crying I'm like oh I'm like uh, uh Spurrier just beat uh, the Bulldogs. He's like, oh, my God. He's like, that's the sexiest thing I've ever seen in my life. That's crazy. Like, Hell, yeah, that is. Hell, yeah, that is. <laughs> Sitting at the bar basically alone, crying alone with nobody. You know, not like she's looking for you know sympathy from somebody. She's just alone crying watching the game. I'm just like, that's awesome. Greenville. Yep, you're right. Greenville. Greenville? Yep. yep. I just go. looked it up. Pirates. Okay. So If you have a chance to go party there, watch a game, go for it. Yeah? Yeah. Road trip. So, dude, they've got the... Uh, They've got the cannons. They shoot off the cannons every time they score. Nice. Yeah, got to hear that once. So did they steal <laughs> we got to hear it one once. time? Did they steal that from the Bucks, or did the Bucks steal it from them? I'm thinking ECU's been around a lot longer than the Bucks. Pro- right? Uh, football wise, oh, I don't yeah. know. School well, wise, Tampa Bay's only been around since the '60s, right? '70s. '70s. That's right. '70, 70, '72, 70, '72. Yeah. Okay. So since '76. Oh, even that late, '76. Yeah. So ECU's been there a hundred years at least. You would think. Yeah. So they stole it from them. Steelers. Mm-hmm. The Pirates, baby. The Pirates. The Pirates. And then, you know, I, I want to see Wisconsin beat Ohio State for more than one reason. One, because we need them to, to lose a conference game. And two, it's Ohio State. And I can't wait to. There are certain teams yep. that I like to watch lose more than I like to watch my guys kill somebody. I can't wait to rub that through a bunch of people's faces. I would rather watch Florida State lose than watch than watch Florida Beat somebody by fifty-five points. Not that I don't want them to beat them, but I would switch the games. I would let that one go, and I'd watch the Florida State lose. I would. I would. I'm like, yep. Yeah, uh huh. Nice. And Florida State could be down by fifty-five, and I'd still watch that still whole thing. Watch I'm like, it. Yeah. Yep. There you go. I know. I love it. I love. I love it. Well, before we jump into NFL news, uh, uh, MMA world here, Ronda Rousey will make her octagon return finally. Uh, she's going to be fighting Amanda Nunez for the women's bantamweight championship on december 30th which will be ufc 207 in las vegas 
it's going to be a great fight, actually. Both of these come from a judo background. You know, they both like to submit people. Ronda Rousey likes that arm bar. Nunez likes the rear naked choke. Here's my question. Is, is Do you think that um, people are like me and just root against her at this point? Because I, do, I just cannot get behind her at all. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a are fan, you? and I understand it, you know, because she, it's almost like, okay, growing up, you know, being in northern Michigan, I had to deal with Michael Jordan. Right. Being a Pistons guy. And it's like, man, the guy's great. He's winning, and then all of a sudden he starts winning titles. And right. you're like, oh, I hate him even more. And now, you know, X years later, he's gone. I appreciate everything he did. Um, and I see that effect with certain athletes, and I see that with Ronda Rousey. Like, yeah, but she's here's the thing, just, though. She's talking about good. somebody who won all the time. All the time. Not somebody who was good until she met somebody who was good. Uh, she didn't meet anybody that was good. She got knocked out. Right. Uh, Mike Tyson, he got knocked out by Buster Douglas. And what did Buster Douglas do on his first title defense? He lost. What did um, Holly Holm do yeah, on her lost. first? Yeah, you know, she got, and I see that. I see that Buster Douglas Tyson effect on Rousey. And to take a, a little over a year off, get mentally straightened out, and now she's training like a madman, mad woman. Yeah, but you know what, though? Sometimes don't you think you get what you deserve when you start running your mouth and getting nasty like she was? Until you have someone that can ba- it, back it up. And I, then I, she I see, did. And, and, and somebody <laughs> did Even if it was a lucky knockout, she right. still did. You know, she, she squared she up against her and out. she got it. She got knocked out. Now, one of two is things. That ego th- is that ego also? One of two things is going to happen here. Either she goes on another win spree. And we learned, okay, yeah, that or was a lucky done forever. Night. Or yes, exactly. It's going to be one of the two, mm-hmm. and we'll find that out sooner than later. Because it's not like she's taking a warm up fight. She lost her title. She took a year off. Now she's back fighting for a title. That's so stupid. She never got her title shot. Her uh, rematch. She's entitled to a rematch. Fairness or not, what's fair is she's entitled to a rematch. And she's getting it. She's exercising it. And instead of saying, okay, I'm going to fight Jane and Jill. And then ex- uh, exercise my rematch clause, my first fight back, I'm going to sh- prove to the world that I am that good, and I'm going to win the title back. Or she falls short, and that's it. She Two two losses and in a row. And then she fights the Russian. And that's oh, the end of Cyborg? Her uh, the, the Brazilian. That's the, oh, is she, oh, Brazilian? Yeah, Chris Cyborg's Brazilian. I think she was... Oh, no. She talks like she's Russian, but oh, she's okay. Brazilian. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and she looks... Kind of Russian esque in the face. I, I I could see that. Um, and she looks like a Russian man, but yeah, <laughs> with long hair. But you know that's a 10, 10 pound swing, fifteen pound swing. That fight needs to happen. It's not going to happen. Not anytime soon. It's going to be a while before we see a a cyborg Rousey fight. But if Rousey comes back and loses N- uh, Nunez, then it's we, over. Anyway. Yeah, it, it's over. You know, and uh, Cyborg just uh, said the other day on her Twitter account, look, I I'll, must end you. I want to fight Rousey, and Rousey could lose the next 100 fights, but I still want to fight her. It's not about the money, it's about respect and to see who the best fighter is. And that's awesome. Like, it's not even like she's been talking well, trash. She, know, she knows. She yeah. knows. She's been talking trash for the last couple of years on Twitter, like calling her out every other day. And, uh, you calling know, out, out, who's calling who out? Cyborg's calling out Rousey. Right. And Rhonda has yet to address it. She said she'd like to fight it, but not at her weight class. It's got to be at a you know comfortable weight for both fighters, yada, yada, yada. But um, as of right now, we do finally get to see Rousey back in the octagon. Rousey wants nothing to do with her. Dana did predict that he, he, we would see her before the year's out, and literally he's picking it two days before, December 30th. <laughs> so UFC 207, uh, Rousey will take on Nunez for the Bantamweight uh, Championship uh, in the women's division. And uh, other another sports crossover oh. stars jumping into the MMA pool. I just saw that. Now, before we get into that, um, are you going to be able to make it down to the fight time from uh, MMA? What day is that? That is... If it's the weekend of the 30th this month, I will not be able to. It will not be. It will be... It's next. Th- it's next Friday. A week from today, the twenty first. Yep. I'm gonna feel to, like calling a fight. I got to make a lot of movement on my schedule to pull that off. Is it Friday night or is it Saturday night? It's Friday night. It's Friday night. <clears throat> We're gonna go up. We're gonna do the fight, and then we'll see if we come back that night or maybe that next morning early. So either way, we'll be back. We'll be back by noon, at the latest Saturday. It'd be, if I were able to make it, I'd have to. I would have to come back that night. I'd have to drive separate. You'd have to go back and come back. Yeah, only because uh, dad duty obligations by nine the next morning. 
Gotcha. Ooh, yeah. that's tough because you'll yeah, you leave I'm, by I'm, you leave by midnight. I'm doing it now, three nights, four nights a week, as it is across the street. Would that be something you you'd want to do? If I can pull off uh, coverage for Friday, because I've got them till usually till nine nine thirty Friday night, and then uh, off to do the gauntlet across the street till four in the morning. Right. So to to do that time wise, you know, not getting sleep. That's that's not even gonna make a difference to you. Right. Yeah, you'll be back whether it's even, across the street or you downstairs. might be back earlier. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah. So that that's not the issue. It's just making sure I got coverage for the kids. So uh, I'll let you know within the next twenty four hours. Okay. Uh, uh, Greg Hardy announced that he's taken a shot into the MMA world, former uh, Dallas football star. <laughs> uh, so it, he's definitely an athlete. Yep. He's got the size. Yep. He has no experience. So is this a matter None? of... Uh, it's like his ego's about to write a check. I was just going to say, is this a matter of keeping relevant just as an athlete, or is this like, okay, this is the next step in my career because I'm never going to play football again because no one's going to pick me up because I'm a jerk, so I'm going to go try this. Um, I think you – here's the thing. How old is he? Golly, man, he can't be that old, 30. But how many – You know, people, I think people forget also, this isn't just a bunch of strong dudes. These are world-class, as, world, world-class athletes – who trained for many, 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 many moons? He's twenty eight to do this. Oh, he's young, he's still young. Twenty eight years young. You know, now if, he's not saying I'm I'm wanting to go join the UFC. All right, he's going to go join some small. If he goes to do a couple of years and gets good and starts, uh, yeah, why not? I have no problem with that. Because you saw Herschel Walker do it. He went out there and tried it. He didn't jump yeah, in the UFC thing. Um, uh, what's his name? He used to be the Lions receiver, Joey. Oh man, what the heck was what his name? Fuko? He was a young kid. Uh, late, late 90s, mid to late 90s. I don't know what was his name. He was an MMA fighter, and, you know, he didn't do so hot either. I mean, I'm not going to take the MMA guys and ask them to go play football. Right? I, I, no, I don't think, you know, nobody ever crosses the other way. That's, Johnny Morton, sorry. Th- that's the weird thing about this, you know? Nobody crosses the other way. Everybody f- goes into fighting, and it makes no sense to me Cause, because they think it's just brawling. It's not brawling, no, gentlemen. Exactly. It's not. This isn't getting get drunk at the bar. And you got a good point. I okay. mean, you don't see people in MMA saying, "Okay, now I want to go play football right. or go be an NBA star." I'm going to go play baseball. Yeah, unless you've been brought up, brought through the leagues, and know how to some, play properly. Right. There's it's a lot of happening. nuance. There's a lot of nuance. And I think that's unfair to the guys in the USC. That would drive me up the wall. Uh, you know what? That they just assume there's no nuance. It's just straight up you know, throw throw fists and call it even. Well, if you go join a martial art of some sort and then cross it over with something else, you know, you take judo and tang sudo. You know, you mix two and all of a sudden now you're a mixed martial artist. You do it for a year. You do it for two years. It's not like a... Like the other sports we talked about, like hockey, baseball, right. basketball. You grew up going through that. You played in high school. You, you pro- had a ball probably, in your hand all your life. You played in college, and you might have been drafted, or you might have been a walk-on, whatever. Okay, that, Exactly. You've had that ball in your hand the, your whole life. MMA is still 15, 18 years young. No one's been doing it their whole life. Now, you've done martial, some sort of martial art maybe your whole life, whether it be uh, tang Sudo, Taekwondo, Judo, uh, whatever. You've done that most of your life. But then when you're actually getting in there and now the striking's real, because, you know, when you go to these these martial arts, these uh, karate tournaments, we'll say, just to speak vaguely, you get, you know, first first person to three points wins, whether it's a throw or a, a sudden, you know, tap or hit of some sort. It's a strike with, with gloves on. Now you're putting on gloves on, and now you're right. beating the snot out see, of somebody. That's, it's, it's different. That's a good call because... You're literally hitting people just to get a point. You're not trying to stop them, put them out, knock them out, bingo, get them from killing you. That's not what's going on. You're strictly using it as a point system. Right. That's it. That's it. Now, when you say, okay, points don't matter unless you hit the ground or it's for certain things, you know, you're going in there. You have to knock this guy out or he's going to kill you. Right. You go from trying to get three points first to now you've got trying three five-minute rounds to survive. Right. Yeah. So, or five five minute rounds. Thank you. Yep. And uh, yeah, talk about that. Right. In a in a main event status. Now, Greg Hardy. You know, he's twenty eight. He's gonna. I'm sure t- if he doesn't have any some sort of martial arts background, which I'm assuming he does not. He's been a football player all his whole life. You don't see too many athletes that are like, oh yeah, I played uh, defensive end and I'm a, a purple belt and whatever. You know, you don't hear that. 
So he's going to... Now, we're not saying that doesn't happen. It can't, right, that it right. can't happen, but you just don't hear of it. Now, to take two years and try to somewhat perfect an, whatever martial art he takes, most people take jujitsu ju- and or uh, judo because that's the takedown method, and then you get a boxing trainer. You're talking four or five years. See, that's what I'm saying. It's not going to happen. Now, now, here's the thing. Four or five years for a normal person, okay? I'll even give you this. Now... He is a world class, uh, world class athlete. Mm-hmm. Okay, so even if you were to say, "I'll give you half," that's still two and a half years, right? And then, right? In, and I'm y- giving you a, a, a nice portion. Two and a half years is a lot. That's a okay? lot. And to give, and that's just to throw him into amateur status, right? You know, UFC is the end all be all, and then you've got a handful of you know the Bellators, yep. uh, you know, other fight, prom- time. fight time, other promotions that are a step underneath UFC. Because the best of the best MMA fighters Just go to UFC. Just because popularity and, and their TV. And that's, and that's, who, that's all Dana right. recruits. Right. But, you know, you go to the other promotions that are one step under him, he still couldn't hang in those. No. Definitely not. You know, it's just not going to happen. So Imagine we take him and we put him in uh, against uh, Andreas. Andreas would chop that guy in half. See? And this kid's six. Andreas is twenty two years old or some shit like this that. This kid's six four two seventy eight. He's mm. a big dude. He's a big boy. Mm. And then you got to think, okay, to be considered a heavyweight, you have to fight at the max two sixty five. So naturally, he's going to so drop. He's a so, super heavyweight. Yeah, that, which they do have. At this point, I mean, you wouldn't want to fight at that weight. You'd want to get him down to two. Yeah, you want him lean. You, w- you want him possible. lean. You want him strong. I mean, yeah. you, and here's the thing, right off the bat. Um, He's he could be built like a, you know a brick shit house, mm-hmm. and he is. He is. But if he doesn't lean down, he's not going to have. He's not going to be able to go for the three, uh, the five, five he's not minute rounds. Endurance. He's no not going to have the flexibility. When you're that big, you will not have the endurance you need to get there. No. And then you will have a guy, forty five, fifty five, sixty five pounds less than you, who will be able to as long as he doesn't get knocked out by you, he's going to wear you down, and eventually he's going to tie you up. Yep. And that's it. It's over. And once again, even though I always say that I'm, I'm a boxing fan, and I always think that. If you if you really put two of the guys together and 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 you put uh, it, it's much easier for somebody to come in and fight an MMA fighter and have a chance of knocking them out and winning a fight mm-hmm. way easier than go- putting somebody in the ring with a boxer and thinking they're going to beat them just because of the nuance and the and the art of boxing. Right. But that being said, I think uh, I think with all this crossover, it's very disrespectful to the MMA guys. Because it's oh I can just go in there and I can I can do that I'm strong I get it and and you know the you disrespect know? I understand that it, it is to an and extent that's me saying that but then it's also to an extent like okay his time in football is done so what else is he going to do he's going to go pick up a golf club right we still have this mm-hmm. well, football player playing golf hockey no definitely not basketball mm-hmm. hell no so a big dude like that what do you what sports left apparently for baseball is okay <laughs> uh, apparent you know. Can you see this guy swinging a bat? Here's the thing. No, no. But here's so my, put here's him in my the question. Next best thing. Does he have the discipline to say, you know what? I've got to, I've got to dedicate five years of my life to, to even to do this. And, a, and here's to, it, to and that's a, not even the problem. To be a three on a one to ten. And, and that's <laughs> do I and no? Do I have to dedicate five years of my life for everybody to not give a damn about me? You know his ego. Don't forget, he's got to overcome his ego. Well, it's not a team sport, you so know? that's in his favor. Yeah, but he also doesn't have anybody sharing his name. No. Yeah. You know, when you, when you do have thousands and thousands and thousands of people screaming your name, particularly like you, and you know it, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, and that's your sport, and then all of a sudden you walk into your sport, and there's five guys in the gym, and four of the five guys don't even care who you are. Yeah, let alone I, the people who don't have any idea who you are in the stands. I'm going to pay attention to it because it's of interest to me. Because, uh, like I said, he he's it's not a team sport. He's got a bad, well, I wouldn't say bad attitude. He's just got off field problems. So but this, this is, might be perfect for him to use that. Chip I was just going to say this is a good outlet for him at this point. So, and we'll segue from that football player right into football. And uh, yeah, we yeah. had a Thursday night game last night. Snoozer, man, I actually I nodded off at uh, during the second quarter. Man, it was what thirteen to. I don't even remember what the the score was at the time, and I, I literally did. It was can, thirteen to seven, I think, and I nodded off. Can I please tell you something here? What this week six of the football season, mm-hmm. right? I'm very pissed that we have not got we none of us have all gotten together and watched a game yet, and that that upsets me. That pisses me off. This Sunday is a possibility for me. Oh yeah. If if we can meet somewhere in the middle, I just hate getting dragged to golf oh, game on my right. day off. Yeah. You know, that's my you're thing. Up in, you're up in Canada, yeah. Afghanistan, a, a, 
So when you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going next door to Mr. Berry's or going to wherever, I'm like, man, I don't want to go all the way to Golf Gate. You know I'm what, there though? Too much I got some is. buddies that live in Bradenton. We can go to downtown Bradenton and get stupid. Well, there's a Buffalo Wild Wings across the street from the mall. That's nice. Brand new building. Which mall? Uh, DeSoto Square. Right on 41. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's and like I said, I can't even meet you in the middle, like a university Buffalo Wild Wings. I would rather go up to uh, Bradenton. Yeah? I hate university. I hate anything around there. Okay. I hate that area. Well, we'll try to set and it up. And by the way, you know, Bradenton, I like, have you been, you've been to, obviously, Jay, you've been to the uh, Main Street in, in Bradenton? I've been yeah, down there one so. time. Years Dude, ago. That's, that's a, have you, oh my God, they've redone it. It is awesome. I haven't like the, been the, there the, in a the, while. The kangaroo and stuff is Lost over kangaroo, there. Lost kangaroo, yep. Dude, I mean, it's good stuff. And I got some buddies up there who would be a lot of fun. My boy Todd lives up over there. So we can get stupid and, you know, we can have a good time. Let's rip through these picks real fast. Let's and, do it. And uh, let me pull up mine here. I'm going to go off of what I actually selected on my uh, my fantasy pool here. Last night we saw San Diego defeat the uh, the the Denver Broncos. Broncos that are just, man, yikes. D-O-N-E, stick a fork in them. Yeah, I, I agree, man. Uh, that that might be Oakland's division now to win. I it, I, I think I unfortunately have to may possibly. Have I to am not worried him. about that yet. He he came back from being hurt. He he tried to get back into it. He played a very good uh, Rivers, who is just dying to finally break the, you know, stop the bleeding. You know, so we'll see we'll see next week how it turns out. I did go in my fantasy pickums last night. I did take San Diego, and they won. Oh, by the way, I saw your trade for Gurley. Dumped him. See ya. I hate you. I told you I would have given you all kinds of stuff for that. Dumped him. Gone. History. Yeah. Out with the old. As soon as that happened, I got the, oh. <laughs> Sent me the thing. I'm like, I hate you. Buffalo is home against San Francisco. Who do you like? Buffalo at San Francisco. San Francisco is horrible. San Francisco is horrible. Um. But I I can't go with, I can't go with Rex so I'm gonna have to go San Francisco. Buffalo. Yeah, that's probably true, but I can't do it. I, I took Buffalo. Uh, Chicago at home against Jacksonville. <laughs> wow. I'm going with Buffalo. I think they're they're hot right now. I think that's the. They're not playing that game. <laughs> and and Kaepernick starting that game too. Yeah. <laughs> Cap, so confused all of a sudden. Cap gets his first. Start Didn't of the you season. say you said. Did you just say Jacksonville and uh, Chicago? Chicago? I jumped the line. I'm sorry. No, okay. I thought I said Buffalo, San Francisco. You did. Then we answered that, and you said, okay, now <laughs> Chicago. Oh, sorry. That's I, right. All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Buffalo, San Francisco. I like Buffalo. Right. That's where I'm going with that. Next. <laughs> Next. Buffalo, San Francisco. Buffalo, San Francisco. I'm going to take San Francisco. I see what I did there. I did that twice you gonna do it row. again? Jeez, oh, Pete's man, it's Friday. Let's do it again. Right. Let's do it again. You ready? Chicago at home against Jacksonville. I like Chicago. Oh, yeah, so you take San Francisco. San Francisco. <laughs> You're taking San Francisco. San Francisco. Uh, I can't. I can't take Buffalo. I can't do it. I hate them. Chicago. I'd lose first. Chicago. Yeah. You know, I'm. Jacksonville's eventually got to do something, right? They got to eventually you, do something. You would think. I'm gonna take Jacksonville. Jacks, huh? Detroit at home against the Rams. Detroit and L.A. L.A. I'm going Detroit. Where is it at? Detroit. It's, a, it's in Detroit. West Coast team coming to the East Coast. Ish. Midwest. And we know, know how trouble that, troublesome that is. Uh, I'm going to go Detroit. Barely. Uh, uh, Tennessee at home against Cleveland. Oh. Going Gotta ten- take Tennessee at home. I'm going Tennessee at home, yeah. Do we know who's the quarterback for Cleveland? The Steamer. Uh no, not I, I don't know. If they did make an announcement, I don't know who it is. Hmm. That's, the, gonna, the make garbage. A, that's gonna make a difference for me. We'll the come, garbage. Just, cause Tennessee is awful. Tennessee Yeah, but the Browns are as a whole are awful. At least Tennessee's playing at home. Hoyer. Yep. You know what? I think Cleveland gets the upset. Okay. Cleveland. Uh, let's see here. Pittsburgh at Miami. Pittsburgh all day. <laughs> I know where your heart is. 
Aren't I, as a fan, obligated to say Miami? Yeah. Hey, you know what? I, you did, I didn't go. I didn't go because of Rex. So go ahead. You could do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing disrespectful. No, I have to pick the Dolphins. They're, they're my team. And imagine if you get it right, then you're the only one that got it right. And we all Bam. Wrong. That's right. There you go. Bam. You imagine say, that. Imagine it. if that happens. Suck it, guys. Uh, New England at home against Cincy. <coughs> New England. Big time. Yeah, I'm going with New England myself. Uh-oh. New England. I hate them. Carolina at New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm the same there. I think uh, Carolina season's done. <laughs> Yeesh. Uh, Hates that white lady. Yeah, he does. Doesn't like white people. Racist dog. Baltimore at New York. Giants. Giants. Yeah, Giants finally have to do something, don't you think, at home? I think they give it up to Baltimore. I'm going with Baltimore. Oh, really? Yeah. Baltimore, uh, I've lost all respect for. <laughs> yeah, Cody Kessler starting. For uh, the Browns, he's back after getting hurt last week. I think the I I, I think they win. I do. By the way, going backwards. Okay. Quick. No, that's cool. Uh, Philly at Washington. Philly going to lose two in a row? No, I think Philly's been playing pretty good football, better than I thought they were going to play. Mm-hmm. And Washington, exactly the way I thought they were going to play. Washington at home. So, I'm taking Philly. You're taking Philly. Washington. Washington. I'm I'm kind of on the fence on this one. I was too. My ri- my initial picks Philly, so I'm going to stay with that. There you go. Um, Oakland's at home against Kansas City. You know Oakland. I'm going to ride the Oakland train. Yeah. No. Nope. Oakland's I, been playing pretty good football. I think it's their division this season. Mm-hmm. Green Bay at home against Dallas. Now that should be a good game. That is going to be a great game. It's Green Bay at home. So they get the, the rookie's finally going to collapse. Get the nod. He's going to get rookied out in that game. I, I think he is. Yeah. Here's the thing: I know Murdoch and everybody and George and said they're all going to say how Aaron Rodgers is ro- washed up and how. Green I think Bay's that's ridiculous. Suck. I'm a big Aaron Rodgers fan. Um, I just got a feeling this kid is not done yet, and he's it's still his got a, last game. It's possibly his, it could be. It yeah. could be his last game. That's why I think it's going to be fitting. He goes out looking terrible, and Jerry Jones will get to puff his chest out yep. and go, yep. Tony Romo, go save my season, even though, you know. I right, think, exactly. I, I, think Dallas, I think Dallas takes that game. I've got Green Bay, and I think you're right, Jay. I think uh, if uh, if and when Dak has his rookie game, that game, the, then that's when Jones, Jones is going to look like a genius. Oh, I turned it around, and I told you Romo's where it's at, and blah, 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 and, blah, and blah. Make no mistake, Aaron Rodgers I do like. I think he's a great quarterback. I just think this kid has got it going on right now. They, they believe in him. They're playing good football. I'm, take, I'm, I'm going to take them. Uh, Seattle hosts Atlanta. Atlanta at Seattle. Atlanta's going to go into Seattle and get the W. Yeah, I, do, I think that too. Atlanta. Like Atlanta, especially after what they did last week too. I know, right? Jesus. Houston at home against Indy. Man, a dump game there. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Houston. I took Houston myself. I don't trust luck, as you well know. And uh, Houston at home. It's a dome game, right? Houston plays in a dome. So it's almost like a home game for Indy playing indoors. But I like Houston. I really do. I don't want to say this, but Indy. Oh. Ooh, that hurts you to say that. I can see that. that. We are all like, ooh. And last but not least in the Monday Nighter, Arizona at home against the Jets. Arizona. They're finally going to shake this off. I've got uh, number 11 is going to get uh, four touchdowns. <laughs> And we're ready to roll, baby. Uh, hey, I said that yesterday, and uh, Benjamin got me negative two points. <laughs> I, I like Arizona at home myself. Yeah. Arizona. All right. And by the way, it's still the Jets. It, exactly. Jets J-E-T-S, suck, suck, suck. <laughs> Just end the season, Jets, J-E-T-S. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I like that. Uh, I've never yeah. heard that before. J-E-T-S, just end the season. Yep, that's, that's nice. it. All right, guys, this is the Brian Gould Show Sports Edition on 444 Radio. Another great day, another great week. We will catch you next week. Have a good weekend, guys.